Wow. Good afternoon. Welcome to our work session of September the 15th. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order, this workshop to order. And we're going to have the invocation by Joan Irwin of the Baja Faith of Manatee County, uh, followed by um, Commissioner Bellamy with the Pledge of Allegiance. Minds and spirits are exhilarated by the message of thy glad tidings. O oh God, let this American democracy become glorious in spiritual degrees, even as it has aspired to material degrees, and render this just government victorious. Confirm this revered nation to appraise the standard of the oneness of humanity, to promulgate the most great peace to become thereby most glorious and praiseworthy among all the nations of the world. O oh God, this American nation is worthy of thy favors and is deserving of thy mercy. Make it precious and near to thee through thy bounty and bestowal. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May I ask again who wrote that? Abdul Baha of the Baha'i Faith. Okay, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, I guess the county administrator and then the county attorney. Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair and Commissioners, this is your long-awaited work session uh, regarding the Board of County Commissioners bylaws and operating procedures, followed by our initial meeting on uh, strategic planning. And so with that, I will hand it over to your general counsel, uh, who has been uh, working on this. We've worked on this together for a few months now. And so uh, today is the day to uh, review with your colleagues uh, the work that has been presented to you. Counselor. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Hopes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. I am County Attorney Bill Clegg. And it should be. Yeah, my green light's on. So, okay. Um, and uh, as Dr. Hopes said, we have worked on this for a few months in June. Uh, before you took your recess, we sent you a red line draft of your procedures reflecting some changes recommended by our office and a few by Dr. Hopes as well. But I know this has been an issue or a topic of discussion quite a bit among board members. So um, before I go into any of the details of it, I'd like to just make a couple of quick points. Florida statute 12501 is the Florida Home Rule Act and it lays out the many powers of a Board of County Commissioners, and among those is the power to adopt rules of procedure for how you operate when you convene as a board to make decisions. And they're your rules. You, you decide how you want to do things. And you know, there's a concept. I've raised two engineers, and I, I spent a lot of time nodding and looking like I know what I'm talking about when they tell me about what they do. But one of the concepts they have is something called pathway dependency, which is the idea that once you create something a certain way, it limits your ability to change it. It closes off some of your options. The most common example is light fixtures are set up for fluorescent or incandescent bulbs. And when we went to LED technology, we had to create all sorts of unnecessary contraptions to make that work. I don't want you to feel like you are trapped in that kind of pathway dependency with your rules of procedure. We are presenting to you what you have now with our recommended changes, but there is room to make more changes if that is the way the board wants to go. It is your decision how you operate as a board with one legal caveat, and there's always got to be one, and that's the reason that my distinguished colleague and chief assistant, Ms. Shank, is here. When we talk about quasi-judicial items, there is some external law, case law, about how we handle those. And so the rules there are constrained by that body of law. But that doesn't mean everything else you do needs to be so constrained as well. So a good analogy would be if the legislature had to behave as a court 
every time that it convened to make legislative decisions, it would have a very, very tough time getting its business done. So that's the one area that we need to treat a little bit separately, and you will see a lot of the changes that we have put into this document are more focused in that area because that's the area that's the most important to us as your attorneys. So with that, I am prepared to go through this page by page and talk about the changes if that's the way the board would like to do it. That can be a little bit of a tedious exercise though. And so I don't wanna force you all to sit there and listen to me go over every change. If you'd rather we just kind of work through them and summarize them, or if you'd like to give me your comments and thoughts up, for, up front, I, I'm, you know, we're here to serve, however you all would prefer to go through the process. Yeah, I kind of like sort of skim, and then if anyone has okay. detailed questions. We can do it that way, so, so we'll try to. I, I think all of the above, but the reality of it is all of us already know some of the things that we want to make sure right. that we look at differently. And I think that should be even a little pad right here so we can have it close to us or brought out now so we can make sure we're clear to address that. For, for, example, for, for example, I know I want to look at the Pledge of Civility, right? And, 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 and certain things that... Oh, the, the pledge. The, I, I apologize. The, the pledge of, of of civility, and but I'm sure other commissioners may have other topics that they want to address. If we can just look at it from that perspective, that may expedite the process. I again say may expedite the process. All right. Well, I will go through it, and I'll try to be brief and not dwell on each small individual change, so we can just kind of get a general idea of what's behind the changes. And ho hopefully that'll give the board the opportunity to weigh in as we go through these sections. You're going to see on the red line that I have on the screen some additional red line changes that were not redlined in the draft that you received. I discovered this morning that some changes were accepted in Word, so they didn't show up as redlining. Um, so you know, I will try to highlight those as well. I really, they're they're not that many of them because. The real meat and bones of our changes, again, were in the quasi-judicial stuff, and all of that was a properly redlined. So if you don't mind, I'd like to start um, just by focusing on the changes on the first page. And the first one is in the paragraph called applicability, where we've recommended deleting the um, language that allows subordinate and advisory boards to adopt their own rules of procedure. And this has been an ongoing issue over the years in the county. And the reason for that, quite honestly, is legally driven. We'd like to be able to litigate one set of rules of procedure when we're challenged on that. We do get challenged on it. We do, I'm on page one and it's on, it. So that change was redlined, but one that was not was that we deleted a paragraph regarding the delegation of authority um, to employees. This is something that needs to be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so there's, I don't know that that's an issue that's one that's come up uh, in discussions with the board. So unless there's any objection or question, I'd like to scroll down. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, is that what this changes? No, no, that does not change. Okay. No. Right. Different things. Rules of procedure govern how the board operates, convenes, and makes decisions. The LDC governs how land use decisions are made, and some of them are administrative versus board decisions. Okay. So they deal with different issues. So, I'm sorry, if I may, you're talking about people Yes, ma'am. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So... Um, moving on, I think the next one of substance to talk about is quorum. Um, section 3.3 has a um, reference to being electronically present. And right now, the Florida Attorney General is saying we can only achieve quorum by being having a physical quorum. So this was kind of a creature of COVID, quite honestly, 
that I don't, we don't feel should be codified in our procedural rules. So that's why you see a change there to be consistent with the AGO. Um, moving through 3.4 and 3.5, those are more stylistic and grammatical changes. Um, 4.1 meetings. Do you have a question, Dr. Hope? I would like to go back to the quorum question. I, I realize that physically or electronically, were, were, the electronic aspect of it was highlighted in the pandemic. But I don't know, and I, I'm kind of thinking through like when the board's on recess and we may need to declare an emergency because of a hurricane um, and we could get a quorum on the phone for that, that would be electronic. The law does not allow it. It doesn't allow it. And the, the, that Not is, in a state of emergency? No, you got to no. have four people. No, Only the reason way. we were able to do that in COVID is because the governor adopted an executive order under his emergency powers under 252 Florida statutes that allowed us okay. to do it. And that was the only reason we were able to do it. And we did receive an AGO advising right. us of that. And Ms. Schenk, I think, wants to add to that. I just want to state the county code says we can't get a quorum present that you have the authority. Right, to right. No, I recall that. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do. We, we, we have to resort. So was this case. added because of COVID or? I was believe it? so. I think it was done in 2020. And ah, I believe okay. it was done. Okay. to deal specifically with COVID. And um, I, we think we ought to dial that back out of the rules, quite honestly, the until the legislature statutes. changes the law. Okay. I mean, it would be great if they did, but they have not done I, that. I, I didn't realize this was something that was just added last year. Yeah, it okay. was. And uh, I think it ought to come back out, quite honestly. Commissioner Whitmore, which one are you asking about? 3.3? Well, we're going one page to another, so I thought we were going through each page. You're just well, I'm trying to just highlight the changes for the board. What if commissioners have issues with what's on the books that you haven't recommended changing? So I was... You should bring it up. Hold up your comment. Yeah, then you should bring it up. I wanted on you. to go through it, yeah. Okay, but does the board want me to stop and explain each and every rule, even if there are no changes to it? Because that can take a long time. I think it, you should just go through it and then commissioners individually can, at yeah. the end, can ask questions. Well, there's not a whole lot of pages. Just right. call it a page number. Say, okay, page two. Does anyone have any questions? Right. No, okay. Just a and yeah. that's, that's and where we were a minute ago, Commissioner Hold Bruce. up. We have another commissioner. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, did you? Well, yeah, I, I, I like the, first of all, I like the idea of sort of you skim through, but then while we're on a subject, if one of us has a question and wants more detail, like Commissioner Whitmore was doing, and that's sort of where I am because you brought up okay. COVID. I get it. There's not a COVID page, but you no, have sir. brought up COVID. Um, so my, my question would be, would it behoove us to create some sort of a blanket policy that allows for more flexibility uh, in making changes because of COVID? things that come up that, you know, as a result of COVID, this is now this way, you know, and is there, would it behoove us to make some sort of blanket policy that makes for, you know, things, makes it easier to make changes? Well, um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, I think that's a, a question for the board, quite honestly. You could, if, if you wanted to, that is a legally available option, if but you wanted to. If I may, mm -hmm. you know, on what Kevin, uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge has just said, but we can't change the fact that we have, we're talking about quorum. I mean, we can't change the fact that we have to have four people no. present because that's state. That's the law. Of right. The state. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I just, you know, that was one example. I, I, um, I was teased about this recently, but because um, I'm apparently there are staff around here that think that I have the look and, uh, of a mafia member. And so I thought that was kind of amusing. You're not? And then, and then during a briefing, I recently said that I have a friend in the solid waste business, which they found to oh, sort of tie into that. There you go. So I was Hi. speaking to my friend in the solid waste business today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, anyway, and we were discussing uh, um, some, you know, lack, some, some of them are struggling with, with hitting all the routes and, and pickups and that sort of thing. And um, at any rate, so while we were discussing that, he asked, you know, do we have to um, 
put it out to bid or are we going to renew? And I said, well, that's something we're going to have to discuss. And um, he said, well, you know, started talking about COVID and playing into creating all these issues and problems for them and blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know, other counties are sort of getting hammered by putting it out to bid. And if there's any way you can renew, and I was like, well, there could be, because uh, we set the policy on it. And then we sort of, as we got into all that, I started thinking this is yet another example, you know, of how COVID is, is creating a problem for us. And I was wondering if there was a way to sort of streamline some of these things so we don't have to go back and change every one of our policies. If we could simply say, due to COVID, we're doing it this way this year, um, but without actually changing policies and procedures permanently. Well, that's an issue. The, the issue you've just described is outside the scope of these rules. That's okay. a question that deals more with how our purchasing <laughs> process and our utility code works, our utility ordinance works, because this really just deals with the board and how it makes decisions when it convenes. Sarah? Oh, I'm just going to add, if there's a declaration of emergency, yep. the Bureau of County Code does towards fast track procurement. Okay. You have to have that declaration of emergency kick in. Right. Right. And that was the thing is, make sure you, hit you know, your button so it's yeah, yeah. is it? Is it, is it still an emergency? You know, not necessarily, but COVID is certainly still here. And, you know, I, there's like three, there's always a variant, like every month there's some new variant. So, I, you know, it seems like COVID is going to be here to stay for some time. And it's not an emergency, but, you know, if, if your trash hasn't been picked up in a week and a half, it's starting to feel like an emergency to you. Um, so, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder, I suppose. Well, I think that does give rise to questions about policy changes that are outside the scope of these rules. But there are certainly things the board can look at if it's so inclined. So we were still on quorum, Commissioner Whitmore. I had not moved past that. So if you have um, questions or concerns about Rule 3.3, which is on the page yeah. 2 to 3, then I'm more than happy to answer yeah, that. Yeah, 3.32, I mean point two. Um, and I remember we had Larry Ann Harris that had um, brain cancer, and she um, <clears throat> stayed home for a while. And I, anytime all of us have had to take off due to health issues or something, we just sent an email to the county administrator and the county attorney, and then they got through the process. This says you have to go through the ranking officers of the board, and then they let the county attorney and the county administrator go. It's going to get lost. So the board could change this. This has been on the books for quite a long time. Um, go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to add one. Do I have to hold that? Oh. I'm just going to add that I believe part of the genesis of the rule was that for land use meetings, we need to know if we, we prefer always have a full board. Right. And we normally tell the applicant if one person is not going to be present or attend electronically. So I think this is a way of coordinating with the chair for them to know who's attending electronically. I think that's why the, the email sent to the chair, so yeah. they're aware. Commissioner Cruz? Yeah, I, I don't like this language at all. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to have to give notice in a proper time, but if, if I'm reading this correctly, the, the chair independently gets to give authority at their own <laughs> discretion to whether or not somebody can appear like trying. That seems to be an excessive amount of power to it. that chair. I'm aware of. If the chair or ranking officer grant, if the chair or ranking officer grants the request. So this, I'm just going to chime in really quickly. This happened in Holmes Beach with Jane Christensen, oh, and the mayor yes. serves as the chair, and she would not allow Jane to participate yeah, virtually yeah, in the meeting. The, the chair does not have authority. Like this happened like two weeks ago. You can't come to a meeting. Yeah, I know. Okay. I don't want it until December. <clears throat> so change it. Should be the county administrator and county attorney. It shouldn't be anyone having to give you authority. As a board authority, member, you authority. should nobody be allowed to no, come to a board meeting. Yeah, nobody should tell us, but we have okay. to let somebody know. I'd like to try to suggest an approach that would work, perhaps the way that the board would like to go, <laughs> which is that the administrator um, can ap approve it as long as it doesn't create a problem in failing to get quorum. No. In which case, the administrator needs to let the chair know we're not going to have quorum. Oh, totally. Because yeah. we, we can't have the meeting if we don't have quorum, physical quorum. Suppose you have four commissioners that all send in a request to attend electronically. Yeah. It I'm has happened, believe it or not. I have seen it. I have actually seen it. Grant so, permission. No. Well, I, maybe that's not the right no, word, I but I mean, they should be. The right she, they should notified. be allowed. They should be Thank able. You. Notified. It's notified. They should be able to do it as long as we can have quorum. But if they can't, if we can't get quorum, we have to not have a meeting, and the chair has to be notified. The meeting's going to have to be canceled. And Mr. Sure. County Attorney, if I may, 
I'm going to step in here since I'm right now in the, in the chair. I mean, I I kind of know where you're where you're going at with this, and I understand, but maybe some of the others don't because you know it hasn't happened. But it is good that you know the county administrator, the county attorney, and the chair all t need to be notified if a commissioner cannot be present in a meeting because of the very things that we do. Attorney Clegg is saying. I don't think we should have to grant it. I don't, I don't think that's the right word, but notified. we should all be notified. Um, and I will tell you, I say that only because Sarah has contacted me several times for land use meetings where there has been an issue uh, primarily because somebody's out sick or somebody's traveling or, or can't make it. And and then she has to let, uh, or the county attorney, they have to let the people know that's coming before us in a land use situation that they're not going to have a full board present. So that does come into play. And I think that's what she was referring to. But I mean, I think the wording on this probably needs to be changed. And I sure. think and the administrator, the county attorney, and the chair and so need to be notified. In the interest of keeping things moving, you know, we're going to take make notes about these things and go back and take a shot at redrafting them and then send them back around to all of you. And I think what we'll do is make it or something a commissioner can do and they provide notice. But we do have to have some mechanism for dealing with if we lack physical quorum. And it's also very important, particularly for quasi-judicial items, that the right ability to see evidence is in place. The right type of electronic attendance is available. So we'll need to make sure we cover that, but we can take a shot at providing <coughs> you with some, some uh, language that you like better. Any more questions or comments on that issue? Commissioner Whitmore. Just the next one. You have to correct that one too. 3.3.3. Oh, that's the one I was just at. Since it was tying so together. Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you okay with four? Yeah. All you right. know, I, I might add that if y'all look in the front of this thing, you'll see the last time it was updated by the board in a vote was when Betsy Benack was chair in 2020. Yeah, that was because Not too of the long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we move on from that issue? Maybe. Yes, sir. Go so ahead. on the next page, 3.4, we did not have any substantive changes to that section, um, nor did we for 3.5. I have a question on 3.5. All right. We used to have liaisons, and then um, one of the chairs eliminated the um, uh, liaisons to certain issues. And um, only the MPO and all that were. And so we have it in our rules, but we don't have liaisons to various groups anymore. So I was a liaison for animal services for years and a couple others, and they eliminated them, and the other commissioners were too. So it's in our rules, but I still think we, if we want to belong to something, like you're the boat ramp guy, you should be the liaison to that. I mean, I'm referring everything to you now, but you know what I mean? Why did they animate us? I can answer that. She was chair then. <laughs> Surprise. Um, the reason, actually, that it all came about, and I think Bill Clegg might know this as well. I don't, well, you weren't the county attorney then. I don't know. Um, to be honest, the county administrator wanted them pulled. And the reason for it was because he felt like that we had so many commissioners on other boards, and it was a problem, and we needed to pull them back because a lot of these boards that different commissioners was on, I myself included, um, we actually gave money to. And it had been brought, yes, Carol, it had been brought up. Uh, Larry Bussell was on the board for the fair. And we were getting ready to, we were going to be giving them land at one time, and it was an issue because he sat on the board. So it was felt at the time that it was best. Trust me, the chair doesn't have the authority to just arbitrarily do it. It had to be voted by the board. Um, but Ed was the one that brought that forward for those reasons, to try and make it look like more transparent, more transparency of the board members. Commissioner Cruz. 
this may be outside the scope of the wording of this. And I know that's kind of where we're focusing. This is more just a observation relative to 3.5. Um, I, I, I kind of hate the way we do these boards. No offense. I know you put them together this year. But uh, every other board I'm on, it seems like the same commissioners from the same other counties have been on that board for years and years mm -hmm. and years. And they're intimately familiar with these boards. Whereas here, it seems like every year, it's just a, a, a thing of who am I going to yank off of a board and put my buddy on to a different board? And we're, we're, we're playing musical chairs every year and nobody knows any. Like I'm, I'm on the, the Peace River board. The people on that Peace River board have been on there for a decade. They know everything there is to know about that. I'm sitting there like an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. And last year, it was who, you? And the year before that was Priscilla. That's three different commissioners in three different years. They even joke oh, about sure. it at the meetings. At least I'm in the clear. I'm just saying. I thought you were pointing it at me. I, I, like I, I wouldn't mind there being some sort of standing policy Ooh. that if some if an act if a commissioner is on a board, they retain that seat on the board unless there's an, extra, an extraordinary circumstance where the collective board here agree that person should be removed from that board to give Manatee County a little more voice in terms of you know, learning these boards. It's just my personal opinion. It's a little bit outside the scope of this, but not directly. I, I think I think that's just a better policy, honestly, to, to allow us to really get involved in these boards and make a difference for Manatee County. Commissioner Serbia, then yes. KVO. Um, those are really good observations, George, um, and I don't disagree with them, but I think logistically it is a little problematic. Um, you, you do have the chair that's involved in picking who he or she wants to serve on the boards. I, I understand. I understand. You have re-elections. Um, so people move in and out of office. Like you mentioned Priscilla. Well, she couldn't serve anymore. She's not here, for example. Um, so, well, Betsy and, as well. And so what you want is you also, I mean, in my experience in watching the board not, uh, for 30 years, not serving, because I've only served for two and a half, but in watching the board, there was always a, an, um, a desire to give everyone an opportunity to serve in all roles and learn about the port and learn about the TDC and become the chair and sit on the Southwest, you know, Florida Water Management District or whatever. So there was that desire too to allow everyone to learn and, and teach. Um, so I hear what you're saying, but you don't usually have commissioners in a, a seat for 10 years. I mean, there are some, but what when there's high turnover, you know, you're going to face that too. So I hear what you're saying. I just, I think logistically there are some things to work out. Please do. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. It's, I will fine. Too. It agree, it's, but... it's fine. It is what it is. I'm, but if I want to learn about the TDC or one of the estuaries, I can go to that meeting. I'm not precluded from sitting in that meeting. In theory, we're all supposed to be kind of relaying to everybody what's going on. You can learn about it on your own. This isn't leadership manatee. Your goal is not to send everybody from one chair, from one board to the next year after year after year just to learn about it. I think these boards should be structured to help Manatee County as a whole. And I think you just you can help more by knowing more and being more involved and working your way up. Al Mayo's the chair of Peace River. He's the chair because he's been on that board for virtually the entire eight-year term of his time there. Um, I'll never be the chair because come next year, if someone else is there, they're going to put somebody else on Peace River, and then they're going to start from scratch and spend the first half of the year just figuring out what they're doing. I, I thought it was an electric company at first. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of... <laughs> And I'm just dialoguing with you. Well, I'm there, glad I put you on it. There is there is a lot of latitude with the chair. So I mean, I, I don't. If you take the latitude away from the chair, then and then, well, okay. Until your chair, and then, and then you might not like it. But I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go next. I don't really care who does it. But I would just tell you, for the nine years that I've been here, and Carol Whitmore knows this, she's been here longer than any of us. There's been many board members that were on Peace River. Uh, huh? John Chappie. John Chappie, yeah. I mean, there. it's not like, like the MPO used to pretty much stay the same. And then John Chappie finally said, I've had enough, I'm getting off the MPO, and that's when I went on. It wasn't that it always changed. And it's not that that's what's looked at. What's looked at is when you get three new commissioners like we just had, we got to get you in and get you experience because we can't do it all. I mean, it's, it, to think that is ridiculous because it's a lot and you already have a lot going on. So I understand what you're saying. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I've been here a little longer. 
Commissioner Whitmore will probably agree with you, but the point is, is that every commissioner on this board needs to know something about every aspect of this job. And you can't do that if the same people serve, you know, for 16 years in the same spot. You, you see what I'm saying? No, it just doesn't, okay. it doesn't it's work that it's way. Great. It doesn't work that way. So it is a hindrance. I don't care how you do it because, you know, I've been pretty fortunate with what all I've been able to do. I've been the TDC chair two years in a row. I've been at the port for three years as chair. I've been here now. This is my second time being able to be chair. I mean, I've had a lot of great experience. But so for me, it doesn't matter. But, you know, for others, y'all better get ready. And you can't get ready by not being involved in experiencing it. You can't. So, because if you are, you don't do us a bit of good being on it. Uh, Commissioner Van Austin Bridge and then Commissioner Whitmore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm, I'm going to come down with Commissioner Cruz on this one. Um, I understand what Commissioner Servi is saying, um, but I think it's, you know, if you, have, if you enjoy the role that you have on a board, I, I love being on Sarasota and Tampa Bay Estuary program, for instance. Love it. Uh, I'm going to be very disappointed if a new chair comes in and has an ax to grind and I get bounced off of them, right? Uh, and I, I understand, but that's that's the policy that I think George and I are, are wanting to happens. see changed. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to agree with with him on this because I think when you when you have some longevity on that board, you have a better understanding of it. Yeah, and you start to accomplish things. Commissioner Bellamy is on public safety, and he was he was you know upset when he was taken off of that and and appealed to the chair to leave him on because they were you know making real headway and, and some gains and he wanted to continue to to be a part of that and drive it and she saw that and put him back on um i guess we don't i guess tdc is different but i i would not vote you off of tdc because it's going well you seem to enjoy it and you know we're making good progress there i guess would be an example commissioner servia well, um I, I know i so i realized it when i started to say it but you know, even as a board member, I would not vote you off of TDC, put it that way, because it's going well. As long as you want to serve on TDC. I mean, uh, sometimes it's like being voted the secretary, you know, and you have to take the minutes, and we keep voting you secretary. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to agree with, with Commissioner Cruz on this. It's obviously a discussion for another day, but since, you know, the cat's it's out of the bag. It's not a bad and, discussion. You no, know, it's not a bad discussion. <laughs> a that's discussion. just it. And since, and since we're discussing it, that's it. just one to weigh in. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Whitmore. And you're right, I, I agree. Uh, consistency is power. The reason why Al's chair is because nobody knows you. I took Chappie's place on the WCIND, and I'm, I'm staying for consistency. I've been the chair twice now. I'm just finishing my second time as chair. Um, I was on um, the MPO for years on the mayor, as a mayor and a city commissioner, the liaison for the islands, and I, I was over it. So I was letting whoever wants to do it, I know how the process works and all that. Um, the port, I was chair too, but that, that gets voted. That's different. TDC, even though Misty has gotten it, I've been in almost every meeting, or I listen to every meeting, because I really like that, but I got taken off. Well, I got voted out not to be on it. So um, I think consistency me. is what we need. And because if, uh, if you all remember, we fill out a list of what we would like, and the chair decides on, on most of it. And that's where I think we lose well, I, you know, I don't think it should be up to the chair. I think if you've been in it and you still want it as a professional courtesy, your person wants to be on it, so you should let them as a professional courtesy. If you really want to learn about those, you attend the MPO. I think, who's on the MPO? You or Kevin is. But you go to the meetings once in a while. You were. Yeah, and I go to the TDC, even though I'm not on it. I wanted to be on it, but I'm still going. And we read the minutes. I send my packets around to you guys, so... That may be a way, but I think as a professional courtesy and respect to our offices, we should be able to stay on it if we want. All right, I'm next on the board. Um, I, I love hearing Commissioner Whitmore talk about the chair. The truth is, if anyone wanted to stay on something, all you had to do was look at me and say so. I don't know if I don't hear from you. No chair does. Now, I realize Carol hadn't been the chair in many years. Since 2011. Commissioner Serbia hasn't, and I know that you guys haven't. But the bottom line is, the chair doesn't try to keep anybody away from anything. I kept you on WCIND or whatever it's called. I'd never been on it. Didn't want to be on it. My hands, I've been busy as could be. You wanted to go back on affordable housing. It happened. You wanted to go back, Commissioner Bellamy, 
on the public safety. It happened. Point is, you got a couple in here that just want to blame your chair. It's not done by the chair. It is done by people saying that you want to do something, or I don't know how important it is to somebody. Term, so, we're discussing is called chair. It's not you. It's any chair. We next I, chair I realize that, that you know, but, you know, it's always pointed out. Oh. So my point is, is that that's all it takes. I don't think anybody in this room would, you're already on it. Give me a time to finish, and I'll call. In fact, you're next, and then Commissioner Bellamy and then Commissioner Satcher. Um, it, I don't really care. So, you know, I'm pretty much set what I'm doing. I would love to stay on the MPO. I enjoy it. I love to stay on the MPO AC. I've been voted on that three times by the MPO. I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy what I do and what my, my things are. Everybody else, you want to stay on it, say so. I don't care. You want to change it from a chair to the whole board deciding. Go ahead. That'll be interesting. A board that, never mind. Anyway, I just wish you would try not to make it sound like I am this dastardly person that took you away from something. No, ma'am, it was you. Madam Chair. Thank you. No, um, Commissioner Servia. Just being rude as usual. Um, but, so let me start by saying don't take anything personally. I always oh, say that. Oh, of course that. not. Please don't. Trust um, me. Because I think that a good chair, like Vanessa, when she started out this year, said, I said to her, I want to be on the MPO. She said, yep, I'm not moving you from the MPO. Um, a good chair is going to recognize mm -hmm. what people are doing and what's best for the county. Is there the opportunity for some political maneuvering? Of course. We're living in a political game. <laughs> We're in a political world. But, but most good chairs step up and do what's right for the county. Mm -hmm. so, so, and if, if it's not the chair that's making the decision, who will it be? All of y'all can decide. Because I... I would rather you take the chair off of it myself, too. Yeah, I... I don't know. I kind of like the current system, and good chairs do uh, support good governance. Um, but not... But not um, I'm not saying that people should always stay in the same place because people are going to move. And I agree with what Vanessa said, that you have to learn about all the functions of government to be the best county commissioner that you can. Um, you know, it, it just, it, you shouldn't change every year just to change. I think that consistency is good. And like Reggie's done an outstanding job of port chair. I hope next year he support chair again. Mm. You know, those kinds of things are important. And, and most people, Chairs do serve a couple of years. I remember when Vanessa was chair for with the port. She was there for a couple of years and three years. Yeah, so I think that naturally people are going to do the right thing. Is there the potential for um, political gaming? Sure. That's where we live. But most people don't do that. Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, and I got to speak out on this and, and not to uh, go go at anybody, but when that situation arrived in my lap, I said, who makes that decision? And the chair's response was, it's the chair's prerogative. And um, I, I kind of disagree with what you just said as far as you ask for it, you can get it. If she asked for the MPO, we all get that list. That stayed on my list. I think what, what, where my shift came is Commissioner Satcher reached out to the sheriff. And, and the sheriff identified that I was doing a decent job because it was quite clear that I wanted to stay on the, um, the Public Safety Council. The, 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 the elephant in the room is the reality is, are we going to allow all of it to go to the chair or are we going to find a way to make sure that we have uh, input from the commissioner's standpoint? And I honestly don't think it should go in that direction. Here's the reason why. We got bigger things that we should be focused on in order for us. We should be professional enough to hear each other out and say, well, this is one thing that I've been making progress in. In another year, I'll be done move the needle on this right here. Or this individual has this background, so I think he can better perform on that. And then we come to a consensus in order for us to better serve Manatee County, like Commissioner um, Cruz stated. But there was some, in my opinion, in my, in my opinion, there, there was some inconsistency there because I did request it. I did request it, and then I didn't know how it took place, and I just said, respectfully, who makes this decision? And then your response was, it's the chair's prerogative. And quite clear it is. Quite clear it is, but we're kind of contradicting what we're saying 
if it's the chair prerogative and the chair say all you have to do is ask me and then I asked and then we had to wait another meeting or so and I appreciated him I told him that immediately thanks because we are making some 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 great strides within the public safety council and there's some things that are being done I think those relationships have allowed me to build relationships with other people other significant components in the county so we can make that impact especially for the community that I that that I um that I serve but the reality of it is is the terminology and then the consensus from a professional standpoint, what can we do best for Manatee County? Not for individuals, not, not for individuals. Sometimes we lose that. We're not, sometimes we lose the fact that we're trying to serve, you know, 400,000 plus people and we make it our own personal agenda. And I, to, to me, that bothered me when you've done that. And I've done and, and, a lot of things that have bothered no, you, no, no, obviously. No, 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 no. I, if you do, I'll tell you. And oh, that's why I'm telling you, you that right now. I understand. That, that bothered me because... I asked for it, right? And then when you say, well, you have to do is ask, and you get it. That wasn't the case. Mm. He had to actually go over and support me and communicate with the chef, and then the chef responded back. But that's water under the bridge. I think now the, the discussion is, how do we address this in policy? How do we, you how know do, I'm going to respond to this. Well, you're, you're welcome to okay. it. Okay, how, 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 how do we How do we address it in policy? To make sure, is it going to be the chair's right? If it is, hey, I live with it. I got broad shoulders. I'm okay with that. But the reality of it is the other board members are saying we might need to look at this a little bit different so, so people can get those learning experiences and we can make sure we're impacting the county, which is the real reason why all of us are here. Okay. Well, first of all, you have to remember that, no, I didn't know it at the time it was that important to you. Number two, we also had three new commissioners that I had to put in positions as well. So that is one of the reasons why perhaps it didn't happen for you. But all these months later, that was corrected, but thank you for bringing it out. I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be nice for once you could say something nice, but maybe there isn't anything that you feel is nice. That being said, Reggie, no, I never knew it was that important to you. I had no reason to know that. All of us, including myself, had things on those sheets that we wanted. In trying to be fair to all commissioners, I was trying to do the best I could to divide it up in a way that it would be fair to all. These gentlemen are new commissioners, but they are full-fledged commissioners. And it was important that they get experience and knowledge as well. So that's how I looked at it. If you disagree, I'm terribly sorry. It wasn't meant to offend you. Um, but as far as being chair, Yes, I was looking at it from that standpoint, trying to make sure that all of us had things involved that we were on. I stayed on the MPO. I think that was the only thing I kept myself on. Um, you know, I, I didn't get involved in much of anything else for me personally because I knew I was going to be busy being the chair because that's a, that's a full-time job in itself. But it was important, I thought, I thought it was important that we all share. So, oh, I agree with that. I'm sorry if it offended you. Um, Commissioner Satcher, you are next, then Commissioner Cruz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. I think there is a simple solution. Um, we could codify what we uh, did ad hoc, which is allow the chair to continue make appointments. And if something sticks in your crawl, you bring it up at the next meeting and the board can address it. If you disagreed with the chair, then you'd need four votes to overrule it. That's what we did. And so we can put that in our procedure. That should make everyone happy. We get the as much continuity as possible, um, but we also can't baby everyone. And let me just say, um, the reason why everyone's happy with their board appointments right now, the reason why everyone got the board they wanted, is because I agreed to step aside on everything I was appointed to. Because I, as a principal, as something that is just a, a belief for me, I try, when possible, to prefer others and put them first. But the truth is I'm elected 
to represent Manatee County and District 1. So I'm not going to continue to do that. Next year, I plan on being on some boards. And some people might have to not be on the board they're in to make that happen. And we might need to... Be we fair might, to one another? I, uh, there's only one phrase that's coming, and it's not nice to say. So... <laughs> Um, anyway, so that, that's not going to happen again, which means that we all might end up with some hurt feelings and, you know, uh, there are boards or there's legislative bodies right now where if there's a change, every single person, not just, uh, you know, not just the elected officials, but every single staff person, uh, you know, changes when, when something, if the, especially if the majority in charge of something changes. So... Anyway, I think that we need to realize that our job is to represent the people that elected us um, and to put them first. And so that might come with some uncomfortable uh, outcomes for some of us at some point in time. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Whitmore, can I ask you a question? How long have you been um, on your committee? WCI and D. Yeah. How just, many years? Just Chappie. Okay. Nobody That's what I thought, it. but I wasn't sure. It's the only second female ever on it. Yeah. I, I thought so, but I wasn't. Do you sure. want to take it off me next year? That's fine. No, I'm I don't not. Care. <laughs> Commissioner Whitmore, really? I was asking because I was thinking about, I was getting ready to say before you had to say what you did. I was getting ready to say, I was thinking about what Commissioner Cruz had said about spending more time on boards and, and getting that experience on a board. And I was thinking that he had mentioned Al Mayo. That's why I thought about you he was and asked you the question. Um, but in the Sarasota, they have term limits. And so really, he hasn't been on it all that long either. But not like I know Chappie when I had been here, when I he came. He replaced McClash. Yeah. He's only been he three been of on us it. in like 30 years. Yeah, so. yeah. But in all due respect, um, I didn't ask for any because I knew you were, everybody wanted, and I'm fine. You know, so that I go to Naples every month, and That's a, or Venice. Is that where your meeting is, is in Venice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I didn't know. Yeah. I don't know where it's at. I've never been on that board. So, I wanted anyway. the Sarasota Bay estuary, but he's the water guy, so I, I, I didn't. I taped a $20 bill to my requests and sent them in about everything I wanted. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I can no tell problem. you my reasoning behind him on that was because of his district. I know. That's, that's why, why I That's why I didn't make a did big that. stink out of it. Well, I didn't. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Commissioner Cruz. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to point out. Couple things real quick. One, don't don't take offense when people keep saying the word chair. That's literally a defined term in these rules. We're not referring to you every single Guess time I've we say the word so chair. We're literally discussing that rules that transcend <laughs> your one term as chair. Yeah. And so we're just reading the the words. We're not really? using it as a, hmm. a title for you. Remember you said that. It's, well, it's it's true. So let's not take everything personal while we're discussing mm -hmm. rules. Okay. Uh, and, and second, rules. As much as everyone wants to say, oh. Chair Bob did such a great job, and everyone got what they wanted, and blah, blah, blah. You don't make rules for good chairs. You make rules for bad chairs. We're making rules that, that, that are supposed to last for years. So as much as everyone's happy with what Vanessa did this year, what Betsy did last year. I don't so think at, at, all. at some point in time, someone's going to accidentally show up and be a bad chair. And you're going to really want to make sure you structure these rules properly in the good times before you deal with the bad That's times. That's an excellent point. So, you know, uh, wait, again, she agreed with you. All I can say is if you want to learn stuff, leave the board you're on. You don't have to, you're not required to stay on there. Go find something else. There's some level of sen seniority here. Yes, there's three new people, but how often do you have three new people? Zero other times ever? This is, this is kind of a unique situation. And sometimes you just have to wait your turn to be on a board. But the, the reality is I think the easiest fix to this, and again, it doesn't sound like people are jump up and down. I don't care. Uh, is just to say the chair appoints the people to vacant positions on boards. And if you hold a position, you can elect to keep the position. And if you don't want to be on there because you're sick of traveling or you want to go do something else and learn everything, you leave the board. And then... The, the new chair shows up and says, here's the list of the six vacant positions. Tell me which ones you want to be on. And that, that chair gets to pick those positions. I think that solves the entire problem is just adding the word vacant onto this. Do we give that the consensus yeah. to the county attorney for that? Oh, wait, Commissioner Whitmore and then Commissioner Satcher. I, I think the MPO. 
And Commissioner Bellamy. I think the MPO is the most complicated of all the boards. And I do believe you have to have a consistency. It is hell to learn all that stuff. So I have no problems. If you ask whoever is in office next year, if they want it, they can still have it because it is a very complicated, it's one of the most complicated boards we have because of the five-year plan and all this other stuff. And so that's how I feel. But I think that's a good idea. I thought that was a great idea. Commissioner Satcher. I would I respectfully ask the board to consider my proposal instead, which is we make the appointments and then we appeal if there's an issue before all of us and we get to vote. The reason is this, because if we keep the status quo as now, that means that because I allowed, oh. because of a decision I made, I literally would never be on a board because right now I'm not the head on any board. And that seems completely improper to one fifth of the county. Leave him alone. Peace you Enough. You on any board? No? Um, maybe we could finish page three. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bellamy. Yeah, and um, my, my desire to be on the PSC board intent was not for you not to be on any board. My, de my, my desire and intent was for me to, to serve. And when you start talking about public um, safety and you look at the, the crime rates and you look at the things that go on in district two, you know, that's, that was, that was my intent. It was nothing against you that I'm, I'm curious on, on the approach as far as using the word vacant, because the commissioners do know the one boards that they would prefer to be on and not to be on. And then that brings it vacant. Right. And then, so these are your options. I, I like, I actually like both, both things that's being said. I would never want, a commissioner that desires to sit on boards, not have the opportunity to sit on no board. That's not. That's just not the type of person that I am. And and I think the way there, there's something else out there. If you don't have no board, I don't know what it is. But based on all the boards that's out there, and most commissioners have two or three, there, there has to be something else out there as far as why. And I don't know what it is. And this is new development um, for for me. But it's never my intent for anybody not to have the, the learning or the experience that they're striving to get when they're, when they're serving. That's, that's totally um, against my thought. But when, when we know that there is a, a, a vacant, it gives more options. It gives more options. And, then, and I, I think because of, of a potential vacancy, it does not put the chair, whoever the chair is, the word chair, that position, in a difficult situation because you know the ones that want to stay committed to the current boards, boards that they're that they're on, but you also know the pool that you have to pull from, and now that gives it. But once you pull from that pool, and let's say an individual has served on WCIN for two years, and say, listen, I'm, I'm I'm at that level, you know, so that needs to come vacant. Someone else needs to get that experience. Now you have that opportunity to, to fill a spot, and I don't think it puts that much on the position as the chair, right? But when, when you're in a situation where you have someone that desires to be on a specific board or on any board, I think that does put us in a situation that we can consistently, you know, have a system or approach that we do it by just using the word vacant. That's just me. I'm going to butt in here. And then uh, Mr. Clegg and, and Dr. Hopes and Commissioner Satcher. Okay. One comment. I think it's only fair to say that we are not being fair to all commissioners, especially when they're new. But I will go along with whatever the majority of the board wants. It doesn't matter to me, really. Um, it really doesn't. But I think that, you know, in all fairness, we need to realize we do have other commissioners that need to learn the ropes. And I can tell you that I don't think they're given a, a fair shake. I know that Commissioner Satcher uh, is correct in what he's saying. So... Uh, but I would, I guess it's up to me. Would you like to be chair? Okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hope. Oh, not to me. I can't make a motion. I'll call a special meeting. Don't worry. Dr. Hopes. Uh, <clears throat> part of this I'm going to defer to the county attorney, but I think That's you know, right. I've, I've seen this handled a number of different ways. Um, the one concern I have about the language in these bylaws is that it, it, 
it provides for either or, either the chair or the board. And so my concern with one of Commissioner Satcher's suggestion is if it could possibly come before the board, you really shouldn't be talking about it because then you run the risk of a sunshine violation. Right. So I kind of see it as you either empower the chair to make the appointments or the board makes the appointments, uh, but I'll defer the, the legal interpretation. I've, I've served on boards where the chair was, yeah, well, public hard. board, you know, where the chair was fully empowered to make the appointments to committees and subcommittees. And in, in, with regards to some of these committees, the committees were the power of the board mm -hmm. because when the, 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 the committee met, they ended up making the recommendation to the full board. The full board went with the committee. So if you didn't get on that committee, you may have felt like you were, were out of power. That is the way the legislature works. Uh, I've been on other boards uh, where uh, in order to avoid any sunshine, you know, conflict, where at the reorganization meeting, a whole list of the various committees and, 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 and where there's a commissioner sitting on them, they notified the clerk, you know, or the secretary or whomever that they had an interest in being appointed to serve on that particular committee or board. And then at the reorganization meeting, the board went through that list and had a debate like you're having now and then voted on who would, would be there. My concern about having it both ways is, as I mentioned, I, I would ask the attorney that if if you all spoke with the chair and notified the chair that you wanted to be on a, a particular board and then you weren't happy with the chair, then it would come back to the board for a vote. But I would just ask, is that a sunshine violation that you're, you're setting up the, uh, the potential for it? I believe that you're probably better if you decide we want to empower the chair these will be the procedures to inform the chair of your interest, and then the chair makes those decisions, and that's it. It doesn't go back to the board, or it goes to the board through some form of a process, and then you have that debate. I'm just concerned that the policy has the potential of setting up a risk of, of being outside of the Sunshine Rules. We don't talk to them without Kessler. a piece of paper. Yeah, we don't ever talk. We, we which, by the way, has been approved by the county attorney's office for years. What's that? Way, a sheet What's that? of paper that we fill out, each commissioner. And it's it, we've done it, gosh, the whole oh. time. Carol, was it done that way when you got on the board? Yeah. Me too. And it's certainly I'm still sure a form of communication, made, just like an email it, would be, right? We make the decisions in board meetings, and we need to continue to do that. Dr. Hopes is right that you shouldn't be having conversations with one another about you know, what you'd like to be appointed to. I can go back and look at the paperwork that you typically file when you express your interest in, but all of that comes into the, the board meeting and the decisions and the discussion takes right. place there. I have to be honest with you though, you know, Commissioner Cruz, when you started, when you raised this issue, you said it may be outside the scope of the language of this rule, and it is, because you can't, you can't, yeah, I, I wish I had. I mean, I was kind of letting you all have your, you know, discussion, but you, you can't really, there's no magic language you can put in here to resolve this because different appointments are governed by different documents. For example, the TDC is governed by 125.0104 Florida statutes. The chair of the Port Authority is governed by the Special Act governing the Port Authority. And then many of the appointments are governed by ordinance, or in the case of the estuary programs, they're governed by interlocal agreements that create those programs. And they each have different language. And that's why you see an either or option in here. And then at the end of that sentence, it says, as permitted by law. It's an attempt to refer to the fact that different appointments work differently. Going back to Commissioner Cruz's initial point, this is really about county practice. This is really about how often do we reappoint people to positions on which they've already served. And when I started here in 03, there was more continuity in those positions. And I have seen that with other counties. But the practice, and I would say the last 10 years, has been to see a lot more changing around. 
this is really a decision that the board has, you know, you, it's really how you want to do business in terms of how you, how you manage these appointments. It's going to be difficult to find language that covers the issue in every instance because so many appointments are governed in different ways. Mm. All right. Um, anything else, guys, from you? Not on this subject. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> Commissioner Satcher and then Commissioner Bellamy. I'm done. One off the board now? You yes, just, ma'am. Okay. Commissioner Satcher? Okay. Commissioner Whitmore? Be quiet, George. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. Right. No. I didn't like okay, that yeah, at all. Okay, yeah, I do have it. That's probably it. Who, I thought, uh, are, we, are we looked it Charlotte? up. He's on Charlotte. National Estuary? Yeah. I think, because That's I, a good one. somebody I asked. Remember. So, I'll, I'll just say this. I mean, regardless, remember when I was, you know, when I won my election, I was a few months away from having... Baby, baby number six <laughs> um no. so but things are calming Sorry. down and uh, <laughs> your hair is getting so <laughs> i i don't you know is this not some sort of it's just to make the point that even if we are going to make a major change maybe we could do it not this yeah. year um on this particular topic so um that's my only point and then i think the next year whoever's the chair as a courtesy to the cur whoever's here to see if they still want it if they don't then i agree the current chair, whoever that is, um, appoints, it will give us a list of what's open and whoever, you know, then we can pick it that way. I think that's a good idea. MPO, I'm sorry, that's always been a big power struggle, but it's so important and it's so complicated. You just can't go in and then have a new one next year. You will never get anywhere. We won't have any credibility with them, just like Al you know, I mean, we have to have, to me, we have to have the same people on it for consistency. And if people really want it during a meeting to not to break sunshine law, they could say, would anybody be willing to give it up? And then, so we don't break sunshine. But the MPO to me is the most important. Hmm. Anyone else before we move forward? Okay. Bill? All right, so moving on from 3.5 to four meetings, which is on my page four. Um, we start with 4.1. We didn't make any significant substantive changes to this. This was basically grammatical, but it, it's been in the, in the rules for years. And as you can see, you have four categories of meetings, regular meetings, special meetings, emergency meetings, and work sessions. And it should be noted, because this comes up sometimes, I get asked this mm -hmm. question by commissioners, what is a land use meeting? Well, a land use meeting is considered a regular meeting, mm -hmm. and that's important so that when you're looking throughout these rules at the rules for regular meetings, including rules on public comment, you're treating your land use meeting the same as any other meeting. It's not a special meeting, not an emergency meeting or work session. Um, before I move on, are there any questions about 4.1 or any comments about it. All right, then I'll, I'll move on to um, 4.2, which is private sessions. And again, this is longstanding language. And here we just basically made some stylistic changes to clean it up and follow our usual, usual practices. And there are three that are authorized by statute, litigation, risk management, and collective bargaining meetings. Yes, sir. I'm pretty sure there was a change in statutes to include meetings around security and also IT cybersecurity. So that may already be covered by risk management, but we'll certainly look at that. We do, I mean, we consider security to be part of risk management, but it may be statutorily different, so give me a chance to yeah, look yeah, at it. Yeah, I think it's, it's only been in the past, like, year maybe. Okay, I'll, I'll check and make yeah. sure. Um, and and they may have put it under 768, but I don't think so. I think it's in a different chapter. All right. All right, I'm just making a note of that. You said for security and IT. All right, we'll look at that, and if and if we 
see that we need to add that, then we certainly will. All right, any questions about 4.2 before I move on? So 4.3 um, is a somewhat sensitive subject. We were directed back in, I believe, January or February to put together a rule for meetings between individual commissioners. And so that's why you see it in here. You don't necessarily have to have it. You could do it differently. Um, it's pretty straightforward in that it says you have to comply with the public notice requirements and the public meeting requirements. The one that's important to us as attorneys is the legal advice that it should be noticed to all members of the board who are not otherwise invited. And it should be understood that they may attend but may not participate unless they are noticed. And that is the practice throughout the state, very well established. So I'm, I'm happy to take comments or questions about that. Any questions? All right. Preparation of the agenda, um, which is 4.4. Uh, this, again, is the longstanding um, practice in the county, which allows the administrator, the attorney, or any commissioner to place an item on the agenda. The one change that we made here that's significant is the redlining you see on the screen to 4.3, where we tightened up um, handling items that are not on the agenda, which the law allows you to do. That's well established, but we have you know, heard the board say in numerous meetings that in most cases, if a commissioner wants to bring an item forward for action, they should place it on the agenda rather than bringing it up in commissioner comments without notice. This was my best effort, and if it falls short, then I'm more than happy to take comments at attempting to put into words that idea without closing the door on it altogether because there may be emergency situations where you may need to do it. Um, I'm ready to take Commissioner questions Cruz and, comments. and then Commissioner Whitmore. I'd honestly rather change the. That's a stupid button. I'd rather change that second word from should to will. I'd rather say commissioners will not, however, bring matters as opposed to should not. Should not seems like more of a strong recommendation. I'd rather make it a, a an official you will not bring a motion in front of this board that's not on the agenda unless there's an emergency or time. Sometimes we get handed something in the, like piney point. Piney like, point. you know, it, you have no, you have no choice. It's an emergency time. So virtually nothing we do is so time sensitive. You can't wait till the next meeting. And if it is, you most likely knew about at least 24 hours in advance and you can get it onto an agenda. We allow for last minute agenda changes. We just had a last minute agenda change, but it noticed the public and some of them showed up. Most of them walked out on their own. So the lawyer word we would use there, Commissioner Cruz, is shall. Right. Shall not is what we would prefer to use if we were trying to indicate that shall something not, you cannot do it. Commissioner Whitmore. Okay. I understand where you're going and we've been doing better. I don't know um, if we need to tighten it up as much as Commissioner Cruz said. For the very reason urgent and unforeseeable. How do you define that? For use the example of um, Commissioner Satcher wanting to bring something up, and we go, no, he can't bring it up. It's not on the agenda. Well, he personally determines that maybe it's um, urgent or unforeseeable right. because there's no definition of what is urgent and un unforeseeable. I used to be a risk manager, so <laughs> there's no definition, so it's, it's somebody's subjective opinions, um, what you determine to be urgent or unforeseeable, unless you have a definition. Do you want me to respond to that before you go to the next person, I want Madam you to. Chair? All yes. right, I'll be happy to do that. There's no way to write these words, these, these rules, without some discretionary judgment being made. It's really the board that has the final say on that, because it's the board by four votes that decides its procedures at the end of the day. Yeah, so the board could say, First, the chair can say, I don't think that meets the standard of the rule. You could have brought this. You could have put this on the agenda. So I'm not going to allow you to take it up under this rule. And then it would take a vote of four commissioners to overrule her on that. That's procedurally how that would work. One more time. Commissioner 
Commissioner Servia, then Commissioner Satcher, and then Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Okay, thank you, Madam Chairman. And this this is a difficult one, right? Um, and so um, a lot of times what I've seen is during commissioner comments, a commissioner may say, I was at a meeting, I heard such and such. Can we ask the staff to research that? But that is not even an appropriate ask with this language. Although yesterday I think... The aid discussion came up during commissioner comments, and I think there was an agreement that you were going to look into it. So I guess I'm not understanding when does everything have to be agendaed to, and when does it when does it not? It's still not clear to me. Well, the way this works, Commissioner Servia, yes, everything that you want the board to take action on has to be on the agenda unless there is an urgent and unforeseeable need okay. for board action. So yesterday's now, I, example. I would like to make one comment though before we, before, I, I, before we go on. If you are a, an independent special district board by contrast, you're under the Florida Administrative Code and it is verboten under that code to take action on things that are not on the agenda and noticed unless it is a true emergency. So there are at the other end of the spectrum bodies that are very, very restrictive in this. Counties really have the most latitude in it. That's just the way boards have evolved under home rule. So what we're talking about here is sort of tightening things up more than you're required to under the general law. Okay, so I think naturally what is going to happen then is commissioner comments should shrink and commissioner agendas should expand because any requests that we have or needs that we have we'll have to put on our own commissioner agenda and discuss how and when to do that. Yesterday's example of the AIDS discussion, there was a consensus that Dr. Hopes was going to go back and do some research and come back to us, but that was not voted on. So when, so we'll just all have to be very careful not to ask for anything to be done during commissioner comments, period. That's correct. And if, in my case, if you said there was something right. that, We'd like the attorney to do, and I felt that it was something I needed a vote of the board to do. I would either say, all right, I'll bring that back as an item on the next agenda or ask you as a commissioner to place it on the next agenda if it's something for which I need a vote. And that does happen with me a lot because I represent the whole board. And so it's, sometimes it's very critical, you know, from a legal and under the rules of professional conduct to make sure there's a board vote so that we know as lawyers we're doing what the client wants us to do. So I could see that happening, yes. And I would just add right there that a lot of, myself included, a lot of us commissioners do bring things up under commissioner comments that we want someone to look at or give us ideas on or they want us to vote on it or whatever, but we're not going to do that anymore, so it has to be put on the agenda. Is there a, a rule, Bill, as far as how many items a commissioner can add? Is it just one or a bunch? or there is Are not. we open in that regard? We are. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying what this I heard. I was repeating said. it. Wait, you're not. You got to wait. Commissioner Satcher, and then Commissioner, KB, uh, Commissioner Van Osterbridge, Commissioner Cruz. Isn't that terrible? And then Commissioner Bellamy. I would encourage a couple of things. I would encourage for the board to consider, as well as we can, it's hard to know every uh, you know, outcome that can happen because of a particular decision, but to consider this fully and all the results that could come with it. And so, and then realize that it still needs to be, I mean, we're here now, it still needs to be four people that are gonna vote. Up to, if we're gonna change the procedure, it needs to be four votes. Given that, um, at the very least, I would propose that when we are directing staff to bring something up in the future, that that be able to done, be under comments at the end. Because otherwise, because how many times do we bring up a topic and sometimes that came up that day, you know, sometimes something happened uh, uh, recently, you hear about it and you think, what do y'all, and we're literally, because we're a collective body, we bring it up. I do understand something, you know, um, I do understand. I mean, I was frustrated that I felt like I kept trying to, uh, you know, 
make the board uh, approve of the way I was bringing things forward that we voted on yesterday. But looking back, I think it was totally reasonable. And so, uh, you know, that, okay, this needs to be partic- here, written, uh, whatever. I understand, even though there had been plenty of votes up until that time that were not done that way, um, plenty of them. But I do understand because it's a major issue and we wanted to get uh, input. But we also don't want to hamstring ourselves and get to where every decision we make is taking weeks, months, six weeks, two months, three months. So uh, I would at least, at the very least, say that a motion to direct staff to come back with the information on how to you know, deal with derelict boats or, or whatever simple thing that we should be able to do that because – you may want to hear from the other commissioners before uh, you decide. And sure, if you get to the agenda soon enough and put it on the agenda that you're going to speak on derelict bo- boats, but there should be some flexibility to keep us uh, moving, I think. And and we could decide that. You could decide to... You're already on the board. A direction to the county attorney or a direction to the county administrator does not require being on the uh, commissioner agenda and Thereby, that means that there will be a future time when that issue is on the agenda and p- the public would see uh, what's come in before. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, Commissioner Cruz, Bellamy, and then Servia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I agree with Commissioner Cruz's intent, um, but I also prefer the wording that the county attorney has come up with. I prefer should. And then I like that the chair can pull it, and then the board can override the chair. It's checks and balances, right? Uh, I I prefer that process um, because it does create, I think, government inefficiencies at times uh, when it is something simple. You wanted a stop sign, Commissioner Bellamy, at one point, in Commissioner Comments that I recall. And I feel like Commissioner Servius brought up similar things uh, where she needed just some sort of action from staff, you know, in her district to clean up a corner or whatever it was. I don't remember exactly anymore, but. Um, Anyway, so, and, and, you know, those things come up, and derelict boats are in my district all the time, and sometimes you want something cleaned up, you want it done now, or you want to give the county attorney direction or the administrator direction, and and sometimes you don't realize you need to give that person direction until the, it evolves in the conversation and the debate, because, again, this is the only time we can talk and we can debate. So, you know, here we are. Um, it's sausage making, and unfortunately, good way to put it. Yeah, it, it is. Sausage is, good. sausage is delicious in the end, <laughs> but it's not fun to watch the process, no. <laughs> and as we've seen today. Um, but but it's necessary. So it, at any rate, I I prefer the the county attorney's version because I think it creates checks and balances, and it does accomplish, I think, the goal in the end because it does make it frowned upon and it makes it much more difficult. Uh, to just throw a grenade in commissioner comments, which is what we're trying to prevent, right? Yeah. So, anyway, thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I agree. I'm fine with the language as it's written. Commissioner Bellamy. Okay. Commissioner Servia. Thank you. Uh, great comments, Kevin Van Ostenbridge. I agree with that because, and and Commissioner Satcher, because slowing business down is not what we want to do. Hallelujah. And it, and if we have to go through all of this bu- these bureaucratic steps, it is going to slow business. So that's the opposite of what we want to do. Um, here's here's my thing. Um, I agree with what Satcher's saying. If we're directing staff to please do some research on such and such, it, that's an appropriate ask during commissioner comments. And I think it, it should be voted on too. And it should be an easy vote. Like who, would, who wouldn't want more information? Why not take the formal vote and ask staff to come back with it and put it on an agenda? But then if there are big items, of course the big items shouldn't, the grenades shouldn't be brought up during commissioner comments. I think we're all in agreement uh, on that, right? Um, the uh, the only thing I have left to ask is, do we want to place a time frame in in this paragraph that says how much notice we're going to give the public? Because under this paragraph, we could add something the night before at midnight for a nine a.m. meeting, right? Is that uh, so? Supposed to be 24 hours. So it's supposed to be 24 hours. That's the law, right? No. Well, you're right. Public records. 
Madam Chair, Commissioners, Florida law does not require you to notice specifically the items you're going to consider at a board meeting. It requires you to notice you're going to have the board meeting, but not the individual items. There's law on it. It's in the Government and the Sunshine Manual. It's, it's pretty clear, and that's why you're able to do this. That's why you're able to walk new items on. Special districts, by contrast, have to notice their agenda. It's very, very detailed, very specific, but ours are not. So you don't have to give public notice that you're adding something onto an agenda as long as you've noticed the public that you're having a meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. The difference, of course, is land use because quasi-judicial items and, and legislative items like ordinances, they need specific notice published in the paper and that's controlled by statute. Well, and what comes to mind for me is when I worked in the private sector and I did a lot of plat work, we were constantly adding stuff at the last minute because finally the bond letter would be released or this or that and it would have to get on the board quickly. And those kind of changes are made routinely. That's a legislative action, correct? But it's it's not uncommon and it's never controversial. Um, so I guess w where I think we get back to is using personal judgment for whatever is a very important thing to the public. Should We should give them as much notice as we can. And if it's a routine thing like a plat, it doesn't really matter that we added at the last minute. So we get back to personal responsibility. Commissioner Satcher, then Dr. Hopes. Yeah, I think I'll just to agree with Commissioner uh, Servi on that. So, I mean, we all know that uh, if it is something big, that there, people would, there are members of this board that would much rather it, you know, be uh, on the on an agenda item. So, therefore, you're running a risk. And, and um, so, yeah, so I think it should be in a way self-policing, so. Dr. Hopes. There may be a, there may be another way to approach this. Um, there are, there are two two ways to amend the agenda, and that's really what we're talking about. An item that's not on the agenda, you're you're amending the agenda, uh, and and some boards require the agenda to be amended at the beginning of the agenda. Uh, I will tell you the school board's bylaws allow the agenda to be amended any time in the meeting, which would address what you're talking about. There's there's language for that. <laughs> Okay, that was funny. <laughs> I'll end it to you. That was but, funny. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, is you you would do that by a majority vote of the board to amend the agenda to for a motion to direct the county attorney to do X, Y, Z. Uh, you want to amend the agenda to consider a motion to direct the county attorney to bring back at the next meeting X, Y, Z, which may have occurred through public comment or whatever. Um, that would be a cleaner way in here because you you would say, gosh, you know, God, I'm thinking about that public comment that someone made about boat ramps, and I think we should we should take some action today uh, to get information in the next meeting. Then you would merely make a, a motion to amend the agenda for the meeting you're in to consider. Uh, a, a motion to give direction to the county attorney to uh, come back with a revision to whatever this is. And that gives you a formal process to go through. You get a majority vote. You make the motion. You have your debate. You take public comment and give the action. I think that will put you in a better parliamentary procedure perspective to accomplish what I, I'm hearing you want to do with regards to efficiency and effectiveness of your government meetings. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I'm going to add to that. I like that idea because I, I've been sitting here listening to all the comments, and the one thing that I keep going back to is I have seen in the years I've been on this board, it's not always so simple. It's not like you always have time to decide that this needs to go on the agenda or, right. uh, oh, you can't talk to, you know, anybody about looking at anything because that's not proper. We didn't notice it. You know, we've got to leave some stuff open for this board to be able to maneuver to get things done. Um, we have seen some of us that have been here a while have seen that sometimes it takes forever to get anything done as it is. I mean, I was hoping maybe we could look at things and speed things up for the public. 
not hinder ourselves even more. So I like what you're saying, Dr. Hopes. I think that's a, a better idea. Um, you know, we, we need to be able to get the business of the people done. And the problem is, is that we are growing in population. We're not getting smaller. So we're going to have more thrown at us more often than what we've even seen in the past. And we need to prepare ourselves for that. And, and by hindering us is not how we prepare for that. So that, that's all I'd say. I'll do whatever the majority of the board wants to do. I don't, I don't mind, but I, I would like to try to be able to move things forward we, we, I, more we rapidly. We bring language back to you that will accomplish that. Madam Chair. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, the resolution that we have, um, Bill, the two-hour resolution, does that fall into any of this? Two if hour. anything that takes more than an employee, if, it's, if at a board meeting we task staff to do something or we're a commissioner and tell staff to do something, if it takes more than two hours, um, we have to. Remember Gary, uh, Larry Bustle did it for Joe McClash. We've had it for years. That's just a rule as far as I know for my office, and that's a rule that's established for the county attorney's office for work assignments. And it's basically a check to make sure we're not getting outside of what the client wants us to be doing. Okay. So it's driven by, you know, our responsibility. And you're okay, uh, from what I'm hearing, if there's anything during a meeting we want to ask staff to do, and it's not on the agenda, we need to make a motion and have four votes to proceed with it. Because I saw, I mean, I'm just thinking of that green sheet. It's going to be three green that. sheets. But that's what it sounded like. Is that what well, we're I'm, doing? I'm, I have to be honest. I'm a little uncertain about where the board wants Me to go too. on this. Um, you. Me too. Because, you know, the language that we provided you was because we were the concern wasn't that too many things were being put on the agenda. It was that things that weren't on the agenda were being offered up for action and commissioner comments. That's where I recall this issue coming up. Whether you call it an amendment to the agenda or just a motion to do something, it's still something that you're bringing up in commissioner comments that wasn't placed on an agenda beforehand. You could add a second vote, you know, a vote to amend the agenda and then a vote to do it if you want to, as opposed to taking this approach. Um, but I think it's going to bring, bring you back around to just doing the same thing, but with two votes instead of one. If that's the way the board wants to go, that's fine. But I just substantively, I'm having a little trouble understanding how it gets you where you what we thought you wanted to go on this. Well, here, I'll, Dr. I'll Hopes. Yes, I'll tell you why I believe. First of all, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a better order of doing things because if, if the motion to take action is one that the majority of the board is not interested in thinking maybe the debate's going to be long. And, and, the, and so I think it's important. If it's something, if it's something minor, then the majority of the board will say, let's amend the agenda. Let's get this out of the way now. But let's just say that the motion is to uh, close the, uh, the, the, the boat ramp on Anna Maria Island or something. And, and the board may or may not, given the time of the day, want to get into that debate and then the majority would say, you know, vote down the motion to amend the agenda to include a motion to close the boat ramp. If it's merely to give direction to the county attorney or, or the county administrator or to authorize a, a particular expenditure for a situation, then the majority of the board would say, yeah, we, you know, we, let, let's take that up. Let's amend the agenda. Let's, let's entertain the motion, have the debate, and get this matter of business out of the way. That's why I think it's important that you have a formal procedure with which to first determine whether the majority of the board has an appetite for even considering and debating the motion that's going to be made. And then if they do so, then you move forward. Otherwise, I think it's, it, 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 it lacks structure. Somebody just throws out a motion and then somebody will second it and then you move into a debate and then you're, you're in that debate. You're, you're entertaining the motion. This gives the board the opportunity to decide whether or not they are ready, willing, and interested in entertaining the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. What's the pleasure of the board? Do well, we have any other questions or do we move forward? I, I, I have no clue. Yeah. 
Yeah. It seems like if you're going to do what Dr. Hopes is describing, you would just back out all the redlining from this rule because it already says may, with the consent of the majority of commissioners present, be considered. And you could just say, you know, may, with the majority of commissioners present, you know, by way of an amendment to the agenda. And just that that'd be the end of it. You'd basically be back to the rule that you have, just formalizing how you determine that. Right now, we kind of combine those into the actual vote on the item itself, so you'd just be splitting them. It would be um, you know, amending the agenda during a meeting, and it right. would just state that the agenda can be amended at any time during the meeting of the, the body uh, upon a majority vote of the members present. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe we didn't always go, I'm going to amend, I want to amend the agenda. We didn't say that, but basically, it's kind of the same thing, essentially with what we've been doing. Is that not correct? I believe substantively it is. It's just a matter of breaking it into two votes right. instead of one. Instead of one vote. It, now we just have to say we want to amend the agenda. Whereas, you know, what we had proposed basically prohibited it in a lot of cases, right. you know. Right. I, Commissioner Baugh, I like that approach very much. So I support what Dr. Hopes is trying to do. Um, I think that that would make things a lot easier. Can we move on at this point, commissioners? Any other comments? Do you have Aunt, kind of a we'll, path? We got it. We'll, we'll get it. Okay. Yeah, you got to amend the agenda now. <laughs> Y'all going to have to help me with that one. <laughs> I forgot. All right, Madam Chair, the next is uh, Rule 4.5, which deals with continuances um, of meetings due to emergencies. And this is language we've, we haven't really done anything other than correct a statutory reference and we would recommend that you leave this as is it's worked well for us in any number of emergencies over the years you know including the big hurricane years I mean it's it's worked fine um, but I'll ha I'm happy to answer any questions about it I don't see any all right well, I, I was going to ask for a recess at some point. We are about to go into conduct of meetings, and I have okay, a feeling we need to take a recess that's right going now. to be a I can long tell. discussion. Yes. So. We're going <laughs> to. Yeah, there you go. We're taking what a I 10 do. minute recess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think I need, I think I have a doctor's plan. I need to go. <laughs>
to drive all the way home, just turn around and drive. Away, yeah. He goes to school. Yeah. All right, we are back in session, Mr. County Attorney. All right, Madam Chair, so now we get into Rule 5, which is the easiest part of this to discuss, which is how we <laughs> conduct our meetings. And before I go into the, the details of it, I think it's worth just kind of quickly scrolling through it to get an understanding of where things are so that we're not sort of jumping ahead by subject matter there's this general statement, there's rules of debate. There's 5.3 addressing the board, which is really where we deal with public comment, which is, is a pretty big subject in and of itself. And then when we talk about the civility pledge, this is really where we deal with that in terms of what is or isn't allowed in terms of behavior at our meetings. And then there's public hearings, and public hearings is where we start getting into the more legalistic stuff, including um, the quasi-judicial stuff. So, you know, we'll touch on that next. Um, there's quite a bit there to go through. And then there's a discussion of um, the votes and motions in that context, advisory committees adjournment and the record. And so that's what we have left. <laughs> so I'm just kind of giving you an idea of where all this, where, where these things are compartmentalized in the rules because there's quite a bit to cover. Um, so starting with 5.1 and 5.2 on page seven, we really didn't have any um, changes to this area, but obviously this is something that comes up um, in discussion quite a bit um, at board meetings. I guess it's worth saying that what you have in your rules now um, reflects how the practice is supposed to work and has for quite a while. And um, you know, some important points, for example, 5.2.4, you know, commissioners once recognized are not supposed to be interrupted when they're talking unless it is to deal with a point of order. You hear that phrase a lot. But I think it's important to remember this, this language is basically reflective of the, the idea of a point of order is you're raising a procedural issue about whether or not something is appropriate for discussion. It's not, I just have a different view or I want to talk too. It, and you know, it used to get thrown around a lot. I mean, years ago, I used to hear point of order, like point of order, point of order, point of order. There were like three or four people saying it at the same time. And that's not how it's supposed to work. So. Um, Mr. County Attorney, Commissioner Cruz. Well, I was, I was Cruz about to turn it over to all of you for comment and questions, so I'm I'm happy to take those. This is probably more for Dr. Hopes. Uh, I know we're talking about upgrading the system downstairs from whatever we bought in 1957. Um, the relative to 5.2.4, you see, the interruption isn't nearly as bad here in this room, because we all have to make a concerted effort to press the button. Even if somebody's kind of talking, you don't really hear it all that much. Downstairs, part of the problem with the interruption, honestly, is it's just human nature to kind of like say something occasionally out loud. Uh, but we're always on hot mics, and it makes it worse, and it makes it more noticeable, and it causes distraction. Uh, is there an intent when we do the upgrade to have mics that have, I know like Sarasota, not Sarasota, Charlotte has them, they automatically turn off after like three minutes. You have to make a point of pressing the button again. And it avoids that much. I think that solves a lot of the problem. There's, there, there are two options. And I'm glad you brought it up because I think that new technology will help. One is it, it, voice activated mics where you really have to be speaking into it in order to activate the mic. The other one is your hard button to turn it on and off. Uh, I was shocked to find out when someone emailed me a clip of our meeting that picked me up talking nowhere near the microphone. Uh, so we're going to address that. The other one I think that will help with regards to trying to get one's attention is that the, the system, I believe, will end up with a system that's integrated with our board agenda software because they have a meeting uh, operations software. So on your screen, you'll be able to click that you're waiting to speak and it'll show up on the, on the screen with your picture and your name and the queue 
of who's waiting to speak on 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 a, a motion or something like that. But the the issue of these mics being hot and open all the time is not good for anyone. Uh, and and so and I apologize for the delay because that was one of the first things that I asked you to approve as a board was funding to to upgrade the board uh, meeting first. You know they had a tough, tough time getting somebody who wanted to do the work because it wasn't a huge job, but it's a big job. But yes, that that's very much on my mind. I will tell you that I just heard yesterday that the entity that had designed this supposedly was in the queue to design downstairs. I'm not happy with the way this stuff was designed. The equipment in there has been replaced twice, and it still doesn't work right. Uh, but but I'm hoping to get this thing accelerated uh, and get your, your boardroom upgraded technolog technologically. Do we have any idea how long that might take, Dr. Hopes? My expectation would be done by the end of the year, but that's not looking good. But that's my hope. Because I, I do get a lot of complaints that people, you know, hear others on the it, microphones. When yeah, it will, and it's 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 the, the technology is more than twenty years old. It may be thirty years old. Commissioner Servia, I'm yes. sorry, Commissioner Bellamy, then Commissioner yes. Servia, and then Commissioner Whitmore. Yeah, with the upgrade of the software, I've, I've been on um, some Zooms and, and we're, you have to raise your hand, but once you push your button, it identifies, you know, who's next based on the time of pushing your button. And Sometimes I, those don't even work, though, right now. Right, and I, I think ours is not working, yeah. but that's why I, I want to know, can we address it within our software upgrade? So with the technology part, we make sure certain bullet points are addressed as far as when we identify we want to speak based on what somebody in front of us was behind us, as well as the sensitive microphones. We really need to look at that because we have no bad intent, but we also have a lot of fun behind the scenes. And I don't want that to be misinterpreted, I, to be honest with you. I, I believe... I right, I, we do. We do. I, I, I do believe by the end of the year, <laughs> regardless, regardless of the physical upgrades, you know, uh, that we can upgrade the meeting operation software right. to do that. That's and I, I will get on that right away. It's Commissioner Servia. Um, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. And I like the idea that I'm hearing about these mics that are voice activated, but I also think it's very important when we sit as a board at the meeting not to make, you know, jokes and comments that are off the record. It just really is important, in my opinion, to do that, whether we're being picked up or not. So I'll just... Say that for the record. Commissioner Whitmore. Um, you're talking about you're not happy with the company, but I'm hopefully you're going through a procurement process so we don't get in trouble. Okay. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. What about when when one of us is zooming on into a meeting? I, I recently had some experience with that. Um, it's hard to be recognized. And I remember Commissioner Johnson when I was attending meetings. And in the end, you know, I, I'm i sure she probably had a sunshine heart attack for the first time I texted her during a meeting, but I just texted her, put I me did. on the board. <laughs> and then we had like seven put messages. Put me on the board. 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 But there has to be a better way than to text the chair, put me I on the board. I want to, uh, before you respond to that, Seth really does try. That group really tries Oh, no, hard. they do well. I'm no, just I know, is but the a... system, and Seth and I, before you were involved, honey, we talked about how to make it easier, and we talked about, you know, getting the plexiglass down because you can't, it's hard to see. And people, you know, particularly during comments, they'll be standing down there, and they're in front of where they sit. Right. And it's really difficult sometimes. Yeah. To and see. I actually thought about calling Misty during a recess, but then when the <laughs> recess came, I forgot, and we were back live again. And I was like, Oh, I forgot to call her. That really <laughs> so, is something that we need to look into. One thing that will help is I, I will tell you I've discovered that here in Manatee County government, I think we're operating at least three, if not four, different online platforms for meetings. Uh, and we have a, a, an organization-wide license under our Microsoft license for Teams, which in my opinion does a much better job for interacting in meetings and you can raise your hand. And the key there is what we need to do when any of you are going to be attending a meeting online through Teams, we need to ensure that the chair is set up on Teams 
at her workstation on the dais so she can see the hand being raised by the by the commissioner online, and so I, I will take care of that. I thought I thought about that the the other day, and I'm trying to get the organization to move more towards teams. So you'll start seeing more teams invites for those types of meetings, uh, because it's it's far more effective, and we don't we don't have to schedule it or you know that kind of stuff. You can, uh, but you can also have breakout rooms. So I'll, I'll work on that. But I think the key there is to ensure that the chair. If we have an online attendee to the meeting, the chair needs to also have a computer set up where she can see the online aspects of the meeting. We'll find space. We could actually be on one of her screens. Any other mm -hmm. questions, commissioners? But I do like the idea of a display that shows who's on the board when, because so sometimes you end up guessing, and then I, do I want to put myself on the board, and I'll push it, and it'll come up two, and I'm like, okay, but if I push it, it says five, I say, the heck with it, and I turn it off. So and it'll also have it, the vote nice up there, know. so when you, you'll, you'll vote, you'll vote with your, your mouse or your touch screen, and, and then the, the vote will come up on the screen with your pictures as well. That'd be great, because here's another thing, too, and, and I know sometimes I'm sure it's fun, but... You know, if no one's on the board and I start to try to move forward and then somebody hits their button, I'm not going to be sitting there the whole time looking at that. So we need a better way because that happens a lot, it seems. So, <laughs> no, it's not you. It's not you. Um, but, I mean, seriously, if we're getting ready to move to another topic, I'm not necessarily looking at that screen. I'm looking at what we're pulling up to start discussing. And, you know, that button, it just doesn't half the time, you know, so. I, I'm just smiling because I'm thinking about how it does without that. You were, and the legislature still does it. You have to stand it, it, to be recognized. And you're, you're standing up there waiting for the. <laughs> and I think, Madam Chair, it's worth noting. Laurel that, and Hardy. That um, in a lot of government bodies, being recognized and getting your microphone working and being able to talk is much more regimented than it is in counties. Um, so it really is up to individual commissioners to follow the intent of the rule in terms of waiting to be recognized in order to speak, allowing their colleagues to speak when they are recognized. It's something that you really have to police yourselves to do because the system just breaks down if you don't. There's seven of you and you're very close together on a dais, and even if your mic's not hot, there's one next to you that is if somebody else is talking, and it's gonna get picked up. It doesn't matter how much we do you know, to, to try to control that, we're close together up there. So it is an important um, part of the rules, and it's one that requires a lot of self-policing on the part of elected officials. And if there are no other questions or comments about that, I'll move on to addressing the board 5.3. Mm, I'm going to say something about yeah, that because that is a problem. Uh, you know, most of us that have been here except for the three new guys, these rules and regulations are not new. They've been, they've been around for years. And, and so we all know the proper procedure. And it really does not only give for a better professional looking meeting, which I think the constituents would appreciate, but it also helps to move business forward faster. Because if you let someone finish what they're saying before you try to interrupt them, or if you're not next on the board, but you just go ahead and start talking, it's not fair to that other commissioner who you're interrupting either. And it's not, flair, it's not fair to the commissioner who has the floor. You know, and, and so we really all, and I myself included, I mean, you know, we all need to, to remember that and work on that because it's very unprofessional. Dr. Hopes. I, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I, I uh, one of the things that, that I learned, um, and many of you saw reality TV when there was a colleague on one of my prior boards that had trigger, trigger issues, um, and what we learned when we brought a consultant in that what really bothered that individual when I was serving as chair is, is if I interrupted him, now a lot of times it was because that person was going off topic and it wasn't the issue that we were debating, 
Uh, and so we, we talked through, and I, I, in anticipation of this, I almost wanted to have a video clip of what it was like before we decided how we were going to conduct ourselves and after. And, and what we ended up doing is setting like a, a five-minute time limit for speaking or debating on the issue. Then it would go to the next person, the next person. Everybody had their opportunity to speak. But what was important was that the individual member was allowed to speak for whatever that time period was without interruption by the chair or anyone else. And the signal to me when the member had finished speaking was, you know, basically, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, or thank you, Madam Chair, meaning I am done. You know, I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm finished with my comments. And that allowed for the person to stop, pontificate, and then speak again. And so it ended up working really well. It was hard for me. It was really hard for me. Uh, but that was how we, we set forth that rhythm so that we each were allowed to speak without interruption. And there was a signal by way of thanking the chair for the opportunity to speak and that was, that was the signal that that person was finished, and then the chair would go to the next person on the list, and then the next person on the list. And that did change the entire behavior of the conduct of the meeting, because you know beforehand the conduct of the meeting was, was ragged. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm waiting to see if anybody else wants to make a comment. Any other comments, Commissioner? I, I think it still is ragged up there. I watch the meetings, and, you know. It doesn't matter. It's still, I mean, I, I didn't. I mean, they would call, uh, call the question, and then people would talk for hours. And somebody, the attorney never stopped them and said, you know, uh, take, the, take that off the point of order off the table, and they never did. But, um, you know, I think if everybody was treated fairly, um, maybe things would go better, and if we'd all make a commitment that everybody's treated the same and um, with respect, and when you um, get recognized, get recognized the same as everybody else, and uh, I think things would be better, and that's all, um, I think it's just personalities. So um, I think that if we'd all make a better effort of that, that would probably make some things, I, you know, I, I'm not going to be... Um, Silence. If I have something to say, even if people don't agree with it, but I, uh, but I still, I have no problems if I, if I'm treated equally with respect, the same as everybody else. So if that would happen, because I've worked with many boards throughout the years, and it's never been, you know, this bad lately. So I think that's what we need to do. We need to make an effort, all of us do, including myself. I would totally agree with everything she said. It's been the worst I've ever seen it. Okay, go ahead, move forward. So moving on to addressing the board, which is on my page eight. Um, the 5.3, the, the opening paragraph there just deals with staff. And um, we felt like there wasn't any need to change this because that's something that we control. We can, the board controls our own staff and so that we don't see a lot of controversy there. But 5.3.1 is the um, public comment section. And the first thing I want to say about this, you see some redlining there, but it's mostly moving around and not changing things substantively. I do need to tell you that having looked at the rules of procedure for some other boards of county commissioners, ours provide, um, I would say, the broadest and the most detailed opportunities for public comment that I could find. Many of them just say everybody gets three minutes and the chair can extend that for good cause, and that's it. They don't have you know, additional time when they want to talk about multiple items. There aren't provisions where they can get 10 minutes because they represent people. Those are Manatee County only requirements. Now, we haven't changed them. We haven't changed them because that's been the way the board has handled this for many years. But you do get complaints a lot, we're not allowing enough public comment. Well, at least in the anecdotal review that we have done, and I can't say we've looked at all counties in the state, but the ones we have looked at, you're doing more of that 
than any other county we can find by a significant margin in many cases. So I think it's it's worth making a note of that. The one um, substantive comment that I do have is that I one concern I have, we didn't change it, but if you look in the middle of this big paragraph here, I'll highlight it up here. It basically says that the board will allow public comment on future agenda items at the beginning of regular and special meetings, which is basically all meetings other than emergency meetings. And quite honestly, we don't always do that. And I'm not sure that we should always do that. I mean, that's your decision, but regular meetings, we always have public comment at the beginning. But my inclination, given I've gone back and looked at a lot of special meeting agendas, and I'm not seeing that 30 minutes on future agendas on a lot of our special meeting agendas. And so unless the board wants to change that practice and start having 30 minutes at every special meeting, that language and special meetings needs to be deleted from the next draft of this and brought back to you for adoption. I have a question on that. What are yes, you calling a special meeting? I mean, so, I know land use is a regular meeting, so it go, and we do that. That's so right. We do it at land use meetings. But special meetings are defined, I'll have to scroll back up, as okay. a meeting that's scheduled to deal with a specific issue. Like, okay. It yeah. could be the budget. It could be anything. It could be we're going to have a meeting to just talk about one thing, and that's all we're going to talk about. Okay, well, now I've got to ask you the question. Because at our meeting the other day on the budget, I specifically asked you about that. Yeah, and I did not see it on the agenda. Right. And so it wasn't on the agenda, and that's been our practice. But it should be, is what yeah, now you're saying. Yeah, I think it should be, yes. Okay, I think if, if we're going to. It hadn't been at all. Unless I change it. But I, I do think we, I think it, I did not know that was in the rules. I guess at some point okay. they've amended them, they amended them to broaden them a little bit. I think I remember when they did that. Um, yeah. And um, oh, so I think we need to pare that back out right. and follow. Have the rules reflect our practice? Because our practice right now is that on special meetings, we don't have this, you know, public comment on future agenda items. Thank you. Because, I mean, I did. I asked you about you that me. Um, You're correct. in the budget meeting because I knew I had people signed up yeah. to speak and it wasn't on the budget. So correct. that's why I specifically asked. So, okay, correct. thank you for that. That's Good why I, we did defer to allowing people to speak when, oh. because you know, we were concerned. Good to know. So other than that, uh, unless the board has comments or questions, things they want to change in these rules, um, I'll move on. You are on the list. I've got one more question on what we just discussed. That includes workshops as well? So work sessions are not regular or special meetings. They, are, they have their own defined term. And the rule for work sessions is that they can talk about only things that are on the agenda. Okay. So and I think stays. we need to make sure special meetings say that too. Okay. So, you know, what I'm saying is, and I didn't want to jump ahead of the board on this one because it's a sensitive issue, that I would, I would like to make those changes in the next draft and bring them back to you that way. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Cruz and then Commissioner Servia. Yeah. Um, one question, one comment. Um, if it says that we're supposed to have it during workshops and special meetings, I, I think we need to take it out to not say that. That's the I mean, idea. We, we don't need endless future agenda for every last oh little God. thing. It would take forever. So right. I'm just saying, but according to this, what we're being told is we're supposed to do that. We're just not following our rules. Okay. We can just fix the rules mm -hmm. so it, it matches. Um, my yes, second sir. question had to do with the 10-minute uh, the, the rule. Because you know, I'm just trying to figure out what other people have versus what we. I've talked to some people who say that they only allow two minutes for public comment. There's one place I, I forgot if it was the city of Sarasota or County, Sarasota County. They like max out the number of times you're allowed to speak for the entire year. Like you, you, you use up your allocation for the year. Well, it, it avoids people showing up and literally saying the same thing every single meeting over and over and over again without with, without a reason for it. I'm not saying I'm voting for it. I'm just, he was saying we're very lenient, and I agree, but I'm asking about the 10-minute the thing because I want to get a, a better idea because I've actually been thinking about this and, and wanting to ask it. What constitutes a, a speaking for a group? I, I get the feeling that people want to speak for 10, I, I know it says five people, but 
five, five people sitting outside of old bricks as you're walking down the sidewalk, <laughs> exactly. and you literally say, hey, can you sign this for me? And now all of a sudden you're talking for 10 minutes. That, that doesn't really constitute a, a group in the sense that I think we're supposed to be referring to. A group is if... You know, Gretchen comes in for PCA and she gets everyone in the meeting to sign something saying you could speak on our behalf about something important. This just seems like gaming the system to get an extra seven minutes of talk time because none of those five people on most of these forms were ever intending to come in. And most of them probably don't even know what's being discussed. They just signed a blind, a blind form at a restaurant or at a tea party meeting or any place else to give people carte blanche. So what's our rules on that? So, Madam Chair, Commissioner Cruz, if I may, could I defer that issue till we get to the appropriate point in the rules? Because that actually doesn't appear in this part of the rules. It appears in the time periods for public hearing matters, which is down on page 13. It only applies in public hearings. The 10-minute rule under our rules applies only in public hearings. It isn't always followed only in public hearings, but... Yes, sir, we have, but it applies only in, under the rules, only in public hearings. So I think we should address it there if that's all right with you. No, that's fine. But, th th but that is good clarification. So in our regular meetings, people can't show up with a piece of paper and get 10 minutes to talk. This or is exclusively on any subject. in the quasi-judicial setting, correct? Correct. They have many times. But they have, and we've let them do it sometimes. And, yes. Yeah. So we just need to clarify that's not actually part of our rule. Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I think my, my question um, would be, and obviously there's a difference between a regular meeting and a land use meeting. There, there, there's a difference. And my question was, when we're talking about a regular meeting, we don't really have that 10-minute rule there. That's basically what you all are saying, am I correct? Right. What's what I'm reading. So, yes, sir, go ahead. Well, if it's really a question of whether the item is a public hearing. It's not whether it's in a land use meeting, a regular meeting, or a special meeting. It's a, it, it only applies in public hearings, um, and I'm pretty sure it only applies in quasi-judicial public hearings. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's right, and Vicki's nodding, and she deals with this as much as I do. So you can have a quasi-judicial public hearing in a regular meeting. The item can be scheduled. It's going to be an LDA, for example. It's a quasi-judicial public hearing. And then they can invoke the rule to get 10 minutes. So it's not the, what kind of meeting it is. It's what the right. specific item what is the that item determines is. whether it applies. Thank you. That took my stuff down. Mr. Thank Servia. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, and I think the reason behind the speaking for five people for 10 minutes correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, was to prevent um, members of, let's use the Parish Civic Association, from coming up one after another and saying the same thing over and over. So it was built in, I believe, to be an efficiency right. change, but it's sometimes it's very inefficient, <laughs> and it's, it's not used that way. Um, I had a question, please, about signing up to speak. And our, I love the way the school board does it, where we can do it online and you can do it ahead of the meeting. Are we moving in that direction? Yes, I think in the bundled software that we're talking about, that's one of the applications that we would add to it. And then I think in the package, uh, did we insert the two form options? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we had, we had drafted a couple of different forms to be used, and they would be set up uh, electronically as well. Thank you. That's all I have. Commissioner Bellamy and then Commis Commissioner Satcher. Yeah, I think signing up to speak is when we have an opportunity to make sure we get in front of that pledge of civility. When when someone um, signs up to speak, you know, wherever they're signing up to, they need to check the fact that they have read and confirmed that they agree with our pledge of civility to, so we can make sure we are being proactive instead of reactive. Therefore, if there is an issue where an individual is speaking out um, that is not a topic or that is speaking out at um, a, a, a rather uncivil tone, we have the ability to refer back, not to the individual, but refer to our, our pledge of civility and saying that you actually have already agreed to stay within this topic. You've actually agreed not to use profanity. You've agreed to make sure you have a professional tone. 
instead of the individual or the board members putting themselves in a situation where they're feeling like an attack, they're being attacked. We should position ourselves at the signing up to speak at a point where you are aware of our expectations of the tone and how you expect it to speak as far as staying away from profanity, staying away from calling staff names and things of that nature right there. But I think it starts at the signing up to speak. And if we can use the civility pledge um, at that point and have them to check it, if they're doing it electronically, saying they confirm it or have them to, when they sign the form, check it. What, what it does, it gives us a different layer of protection if the person you know, goes in a direction that's not as favorable as we would like it. Commissioner Satcher, then uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to also bring up for the board's consideration uh, the issue of, and, and I haven't actually looked at the cards that the chair receives, if they fill out their address or not, but I wanted to bring up the issue of people that are not our constituents, people from outside of Manatee County coming to speak. On the one hand, if we've got plenty of time and you know we're not filling up our 30 minutes, then maybe that's not a big deal. Uh, but if it is a, a busy day and we've got lots of people signing up, I would rather hear from our constituents. Constituents, Thank you. Mr. Flagg, can you touch base on that? Well, I mean, we do require them Important. to state their name and address. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, to be quite honest with you, from a legal standpoint, because there is a certain amount of First Amendment and statutory right to address an elected board under Florida law and, and under the U.S. Constitution. And there are some pretty significant privacy concerns about requiring people to put their addresses in the public record right now. All you can do is really get maybe a, a city or county, perhaps? Yeah, I think they shouldn't have to state more than that they live in Manatee County, or if not, then which county they live in. Um, this is an issue that's really emerged recently in the world, and I'd rather not go into some of the details of why it's a concern, but I, I, would, I would ask the board you know, to, to be thoughtful about that when people are coming in front of you to address you in terms of how much personal information you're demanding of them for them to be able to do that. Anything else on that note? Yeah, so I don't want their address to be in the public record, yeah. uh, but I want to know if it's someone from Manatee County or not, if it's someone that got here on a bus. Yeah. Um, and I think that is reasonable for us as Manatee County Commissioners. And, and Commissioner um, Satcher, I do too. I wasn't, I wasn't directing my thoughts specifically to your right. point, but I think you know, we might want to massage some of the language in here to make it clear that's all we're looking right. for. And, and let me be clear what I said. I'm not talking about people that ride public transportation. I'm talking about special interest groups that would bring in a bus of people yeah. to make a point. And I wanted to make that clear. Um, so. Thank you. Commissioner Van Ostenbrook. Yeah, I, I would agree with Commissioner Satcher's comments. I, I like the idea of just stating that you're from Manatee County. Um, and it, I'm all, I also agree with what Commissioner Cruz is saying when he references um, you could just get five signatures outside or 10 signatures outside and show up and speak for a group. I, I think that should be addressed as well. Um, and I also like what Commissioner Bellamy said when he referenced the, uh, I'm just agreeing with everyone, I'm making friends here. Um, <laughs> making points. Yeah. Um, so I, I like what Commissioner Bellamy said about there's no reason you can't sign the civility pledge at some point. We could leave a stack of them in the back like the city of Bradenton does. So even if you decide, oh, I'm going to speak, you still have to grab one of those and sign it before you start speaking. I mean, everyone has to be sworn anyway. Um, so I don't see what the big deal is with filling it out and handing it to the clerk as you head up there. Um, but I don't want to put people's personal address out there, I think, Manatee, because Andrew Griffin will come in, you know, and she'll protest in front of your house, you know, so <laughs> it's better if uh, you just say what county you're from, and then she's, you know, just wandering around the neighborhoods looking for your house, so it's easier. So, so. yes, yeah, she's already found two people. She okay. found two. Okay. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, Misty was first. Yeah. Um, I'm next, and it, I guess maybe this might be at you, Commissioner Bellamy. Your civility pledge, the one that we talked about you putting on the cards and so forth, it, you know, has that fall? I mean, are you following through? And, and I know you were going to look at some other things that you thought were pretty important to go on there too. Is that 
That's my question. Yeah. My my thing was for the board to, 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 to have a consensus as looking at the terminology um, because in, in the civility pledge itself, it says nothing about um, profanity. We will be respectful of one another even when we disagree. We will direct all comments to the issues. We will avoid personal attacks. I think when we get into an area where individuals are calling names, all right, we can say we're avoiding personal attacks, but maybe they need to understand what we're talking about with that. But we need to make sure at no time in any parts of our meeting that we are allow profanity to come and go. And, and, and I think we have an opportunity right now because this is what it was basically said from the Mount County Administrator. We can address that when we have this workshop. And I'm just asking for this board to, to assist and, and be a part of, of shifting that terminology so we can make sure that we have a consensus on our expectations when people come in for public, com public comment. Okay, I'm, I'm going to respond to that since that was my question to you. Um, the reason I, I ask you that, because I know I really hadn't seen it, and, and Bill, this comes at you actually now. Um, there really has been serious issues that this board has been dealing with where we have had a lot of public comment that hasn't always been pleasant. Now, our board, we can't, I mean, you know, we, we have some rules and regulations here, but, you know, at the same time, we've kind of let it go at times just to, to try and let people speak, as we've heard commissioners say, just to go on and, and, and get it done and over with. So we need a policy. We need a we, firm policy we, on what to do. We have one, and that's the well, next I, rule, 5.4. So if the board wants to move into that discussion, I'll move to that next. Okay, go ahead. Uh, next. Well, wait a minute. The Commissioner Satcher, did you have anything to add first? Uh, it may be also what he's about to go into. I haven't read what he's about to say. But uh, I just wanted to ask you know, the attorney's take on as far as with the civility pledge, um, if we were to add that as something is when they sign up, they're also pledging to follow it. Do you see that as a First Amendment issue? I mean, no, this is a kind of our dance floor. Therefore, yes, we can propose l reasonable limits on what occurs, correct? Absolutely. And then, and then just one other thing for when we, I mean, it's only happened once, but it was miserable for me, was when we had the guy who was actually making points that I wanted to listen to. I wanted to hear what he had to say. But he yelled the entire time, and he literally like I, like I left. I had a headache. Who's that? Oh, you know. Tim Ritchie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not calling think, names. Right? I'm not calling names, but I wanted to hear his arguments. But I mean, like yeah. it was so loud. So I hope we can add that, maybe or maybe not. But and that's why I I brought up one of the reasons I brought up. But you'll get to that, Commissioner Servi. Um, yes, I just wanted to say before we leave this topic that I agree with um, Satcher and KVO on I would like to know where the people are from who are speaking because we have to pay extra close attention to our constituents from Absolutely. Manatee County. And I wish we could go back to the old days where they recited their address so I could tell if they were in my district or not. But I and I understand why we can't do that anymore. I understand why we well, can't you, do that anymore. You I, could, but I'm just saying I don't yeah. think you should. I mean, I just I, th I think it's not the best practice. But you could ask for their county and city of residence, or or you could yeah. ask if them to identify if they live in your district. What about zip code? Everybody zip, knows their zip code. Zip code is what I was going to propose. Could that's, do zip codes. That's yeah, a great yeah. idea. Zip codes actually. Um, and as far as uh, somebody brought up an individual who we see often who is protesting outside of homes, you know, all of our home addresses are easy to find. <laughs> I mean, all that, public record. It's all public record. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, yeah, uh -huh. it's all public record. So, you know, I might add to what you just said, Mister. You're absolutely right on every point. And you know, I mean, if you'll recall, when all the people were coming in on the animal issue. Um, you know, I, I asked them, could you please let us know where you're from? Because I knew we had a lot of people that were coming in that were not from Manatee County. So, I, anyway, go ahead. Is there anybody, Commissioner Whitmore? Yeah. Um, oh, what about the employees? I'm getting sick of pe uh, citizens attacking employees by name. We have to and get to the next rule to talk about this. Is that the this. next one? Okay, because yes, we got to put so a stop to, to that. To move to the or next we're going to lose some more. Fast. So the next rule is 5.4 orderly meetings. 
And this is really how we deal with behavior in public meetings. And I will say before we go into the details of it, I've been involved in this kind of work for 25 years and I've never seen as much um, anger and meanness in the civic culture as there is today. And it's only a small number of people. It's not the public at large, but there are some people that do seem to take pleasure in it and it's, it makes it difficult to do our jobs because we do have to allow people the opportunity to participate and share their views, um, you know, without also subjecting others, um, including ourselves, to some pretty abusive behavior. So the rule that we have reflects the state of the law, which is that people do have the right to come and speak, but subject to our rules about addressing the subject matter of the meeting and maintaining a civil and efficient process to be able to make decisions. And that's well settled in the um, federal constitutional case law. So what you see in this rule is 5.4.1 places the uh, responsibility on the chair to police that, but it does give the board the ability to overrule the chair. And then 5.4.2 lists all the things that people cannot do in our board meetings. And I'm just gonna go through them. It's acts of violence, making threats or fighting words, disrupting the proceedings with excessive commotion or excessively loud shouting or other noise or obscene or crude language to talk, to address um, profanity, interfering with the rights of others to speak and participate, uh, being unduly repetitious, making personal attacks or insults, uh, speaking on a subject which the board has already taken a position or about which the board voted not to receive further comment, et cetera. So, I mean, these things are thoroughly covered in our rules, and these are, in my view, legally defensible and enforceable rules. The trick is, the important thing is, we have to do that with everybody the same way. And, you know, the chair had me sitting next to her yesterday because we knew we were going to have a rough day. And so, you know, we need to make sure we're handling that stuff right because it's very easy for someone to say, hey, you let that one yell and scream, but you cut me off and escorted me from the room. So that's the, that's the most important part is applying it the same way to everyone. Even if it's someone that you might want to hear or that you might agree with, if they're screaming and hollering, they need to be told to stop. Otherwise, you're going to have to let the next person do it. So... That's the danger in applying and administering these rules. Um, and with that, I will um, be happy to take any comments or questions of the board. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. So it, it is the sole discretion of the chair when someone is out of line? I mean, the, the chair, uh, their discretion determines if that person is out of line? That is correct, but that is subject to being overruled by a majority vote of the board, as you can see in Rule 5.4.1. Okay. So Sometimes it says the chair shall initially decide all procedural questions. The ruling of the chair on a procedural issue can only be overturned by a majority vote of the commissioners present. So that's how that works. And that's common. I mean, you will see that. You will see that in any any board meeting or legislative committee meeting, that's how it works. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, if I can respond sure. to, to your comment. There have been times when, um, you know, we'll have conversation on the dais about not wanting to disrupt people, just letting them talk. Um, and then in the very next meeting, we'll have someone that, you know, gets a little bit out of hand and immediately somebody's speaking up to stop, where if we just would give them a moment or two, we could calm it down probably. And the main thing in, in having conversation with the county attorney on this, which I've done several times, times yeah. um, to try and make sure I was following procedure, the best thing that we need to do is to try and control it the best we can so as we don't have scenes like we did like yesterday, that really our board had nothing to do with what happened yesterday. But, um, you know, like with others who have been escorted out of the building, you know, it was at the point where it just wouldn't stop. 
And so either you try to keep some sort of consistency or you don't. So pretty soon these just go out the window. And so that's why I told on this particular subject, I really wanted this board to have good discussion because it's very hard to know, you know, believe it or not, y'all might not realize it, but y'all give mixed mixed signals on that. So it's very difficult. And sometimes that's why you, you saw yesterday Commissioner, Cl Commissioner, Mr. Clegg being sitting up there next to me again. Because I'm like, you know what? I'm only one person. I can't listen to six commissioners. You know, I mean, I'm trying to follow the rules that have been instituted by the Board of County Commissioners. So, you know, hey, Bill, help me out here. I mean, I'm trying not to, I don't want to get the county in another lawsuit, but I want to do what is proper and be fair to the citizens as well. So um, Bill and I agree that it's a problem and it's something that we need to look at. So that's why I was really hoping on this issue we could have some great discussion. Commissioner sure. Serbia. Oh, I have the floor, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you uh, were done. Nope. Um, so I, I would just say that you're correct. It is hard to listen to what every single, you know, we have 50-something people come exactly. the day we discuss the animal shelter, or I mean uh, the, the pet retail sale, uh, pet ban. Sometimes, shockingly, I zone out after a while, you know, on the, you know, the 45th person or whatever it is. So, because Reggie commented one time, he said, why didn't you say anything right there? And I looked up and I said, I don't know what the hell we're talking about. I zoned out. Um, yeah, I've been here since, you know, what time? Um, so, yeah, I, I get it. Sometimes, you know, it is hard to pay attention, hang on every word that, that people say. And the other thing I would point out is that the, the board also, if someone steps out of line and MSO steps in, if a deputy steps in, that is, at that point, completely out of our control, right? The, it, the deputy is completely in is. control. That we are correct. not involved in that at all. And so if an individual, the, the choices that an individual makes once a deputy has intervened, that is between, those, those are their personal choices. It's out of between, our hands. Right, that's between them and that deputy. Um, and so, you know, we should be careful not to uh, imply or, you know, try and hold ourselves um, you know, accountable for what happens after a deputy has walked down the, the aisle because that is no longer under our control. So, Madam Chair, could I just clarify that yes, point? Please. Because there is Rule 5.3 basically says the chair rules people out of order, and then if, if they continue, then the chair can ask law enforcement to remove them. And once that happens, then the deputy steps in and it becomes a law enforcement issue. And I can, you can see the deputy back there. <laughs> And look, we talk to the deputies. The county attorney's office kind of tries to circle around with them before and after some of the more difficult meetings. And they use a lot of restraint and discretion in how they deal with these issues. I got law enforcement in my family, a lot of experience, you know, with how, going through the stuff that they deal with. And they know what they're doing. And so, you know, once that, that point is reached, yes, absolutely. At that point, we need law enforcement. We need to let law enforcement handle it from there on out. Right, and, and I may make sure that I have not implied in any way, shape, or form that I disagree with the choice. No, I know you. Oh, no. I, I definitely no, was made. I, I, I yeah. think he's handled either. things very well, and yeah. um, he has a very sort of mono, you know, but, kind of even keeled demeanor to him that I but think serves the, as well. The important point, Com Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, is they don't decide when somebody should be removed. The chair does, but then once that decision is made, they come down. And now they also deal with potential risks. If they see something that looks like it's escalating, mm -hmm. then they may intervene on their own. That is something that they may decide to do for the safety of the public. And we, we absolutely need to let them do that. Absolutely. So I'm going to add something to what he just said, too. Anytime we do anything like that, we are putting the county at risk of a lawsuit. So, you know, that has to come into play as well. We have to think about that, too. So it's a fine line. And um, that's why your county attorney is so important in those meetings, to make sure that we're within proper reason. And, and, I will and tell by you, the way, oh, the, go ahead. I'm the, sorry. the deputies have just been wonderful this year. I mean, they, we couldn't ask for anything any better um, than what we've seen. Com Commissioner Servia? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, and Commissioner Whitmore started to bring this up, and I had written it down also to bring up. I would like to suggest that we add some language such as 
um, addressing any staff member by name is something that should be prohibited. All comments should be addressed to the board. And I think of the recent comments uh, uh, calling out Jerry Lopez. Uh, I just don't think that's appropriate. It's okay for the, a member of the public to say that the county is not functioning in a proper way, uh, and this is what my issue is, but I don't think that any employee should be called out by name, I ever. I totally agree. Um, well, Commissioner Servi, I have to be honest with you, that could be difficult in, in the context of quasi-judicial proceedings because you are sometimes challenging the testimony and the, the position of individuals who are providing testimony, staff testimony, in the hearing. So I think we would plug something like that into the personal attacks provision and say, you know, personal attacks on individuals is where we would try to focus that. Because, you know, Dan Lobeck's going to say he has the right to criticize the yeah. testimony of our, our planners and our public works people. I mean, we're, we're going to be in a big well, fight over that. And that's he's going to be right. Yeah. He's going to be right. Yeah. He's used to it. He's like me. You know, we're used to that. It wouldn't seem right for it not to happen. I actually don't think it's appropriate that anyone attack Dr. Hope's. I don't by think name, so either. By name. I mean, they can say, I don't like the county being run such and such a way, and they can call all of us out, but they should not be attacking. Um, and they call it, they do that to you too. A lot. A lot. Yeah. And Over it's, the years. It's like the nature times. anymore of the public. Yeah. Well, I mean. I'm sorry that we have to, uh, you know, mother people to behave properly I'm in a professional setting. Um, but I hope that we can do something like that. So we'll maybe during it. future on future agenda items, you know, maybe that's when we ask people not to call others out. Um, the other thing I want to say is I really love this list. I think this list is very good, um, and I think the chair has a tough job because it is hard to remember all these things and be consistent when you're trying to hear the public. Uh, and I, I think of, well, just take our former colleague, Betsy Benack, who struggled with the shark incident, right? So anybody could stand up and say, you know, um, sharks should be protected because it was not right the way that the, the fishermen did that, you know, and Betsy, that was your son and blah, blah, blah. That, that might be hard to hear, but it's still public comment. Whereas if somebody stood up and said, you're a lousy mother and your son is an SOB because he does it, that's different. That's not, that's a personal attack. So there's sometimes a fine line between calling out, you know, what the, criticizing the issue is okay. It may be hard to hear, but it's okay, but you just can't criticize a person. And Does that make sense, Madam oh, Chair? Well, we've, um, we've gotten so far past that. But we, we yes, typically, sir. when you know, when we, when we consult with a chair on these issues, oh. and I, we've had to do it with many chairs <laughs> over the years, we yeah. you know what we suggest in those situations is ask the individual to redirect their comments to the issue, and ninety nine percent of the time they do, and if they don't and they wind up getting removed, it's usually because their behavior becomes really disruptive, not because of the subject matter of their discussion. There's usually kind of, those two kind of go hand in hand, you know, and so, so you know, we're careful to try to avoid being in a First Amendment lawsuit, you know, and rather, it's, it, there's plenty of case law that says you can remove somebody for disruptive behavior. That's easy, that's easy to defend. So you kind of let them get to that point, and then you, do what you need mm -hmm. to do to deal with them, rather than trying to police every word of their remarks, yeah, because it's very can't. hard to do that. You can't. And, it, and if you, it's hard, because if somebody says, you know, this person says something, you know, and yet somebody else gets up and says something, and then, of course, you know, then maybe certain people feel like we're discriminating on others, and it's almost impossible. So it's, it's really hard to find a, a consistent way to do it. Um, Commissioner Bellamy, your next thing, Commissioner Whitmore. Yeah. Check. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I like where where we are because when we have these specific items, right, as far as off topic, um, personal attacks, and profanity, and um, where where I want to know is, you know, 
where, where can we say within our language so it will be clear that the chair or the chair, right, um, can consider someone out of order? We know the three things that we feel like are going in the wrong direction. If you're off, to off topic, if you're having a personal attacks and you're utilizing profanity, but then what? In, in other words, if a person is off topic and the chair has said, you know, you're off topic, then what? But here's, here's the issue with that because, again, we're only dealing with the three minutes, That's it. right? And we're asking for consistency. <laughs> we're asking for consistency. You're only dealing with, with the three minutes, um, but you still have the oath of civility that they should be aware of. So what my, my comment is, where is the line drawn? Bam. And, and here's the reason why That's I'm asking, where, where is the line drawn? Well, I think we're getting close, Madam Chair, because we're identifying the three areas, off-topic, profanity, and, and, and personal attacks, and I think we plan on addressing that within the civility pledge and making sure it's clear, and again, that gives us the ability to say, hey, within our civility pledge, you agreed to do this. You agreed to stay on topic, you agreed to make sure you don't use profanity and you do not use personal attacks. But What's next? After the chair has given that one warning, it, does the chair say I'm ruling you out of order? And then the people in green come? I mean, what, what, how do we go take those necessary steps to protect the citizen so they'll know where we are? But more important, make sure our meetings are ran at the highest professional level as they possibly can be. That's a stretch. So the say, Madam <laughs> Chair, Commissioner Bellamy, that is addressed in the rule, in Rule 5.4.3. It says the chair shall rule out of order any person violating these provisions for orderly meetings, the ones that I just recited. And it says in appropriate situations, the chair may have such persons removed from the meeting, hearing or workshop by law enforcement personnel, uh, or take such other actions as may be reasonably necessary. There is no getting around, the chair has to make that judgment at some point. And you know, being county attorney is not an easy job, but I wouldn't switch with the chair, I mean, <laughs> Never. I mean, it, it is very difficult to do, and I mean, some of you have done it and know what I'm, I'm talking about. But, and it, it particularly, I mean, we've had meetings with 1,100 people and fights breaking out in the parking lot, and, and it's really hard. Uh, and some judgment has to be made, and it's, it's tough. But there's no, there's no avoiding it. And I would add to that, as far as being the chair, I have experienced... Um, where someone, I had someone, I asked that someone leave, and then I had commissioners finding fault with me for doing that. And there had been profanity used, um, you know, not on topic, that was another one, and yet I had commissioners find fault with me for doing that. And so it's like, where do you draw the line? I mean, in all honesty, I'm either damned if I do or I'm damned if I don't. So that's why this board needs to make some solid decisions because I'm not going to sit there and go through that again. I mean, you know, if, if I'm going to, if I'm supposed to do something, I'm going to do the best of my ability to do it. And I'm going to consult with the county attorney, sometimes Sarah, as well, before I do it. But the board's going to have to support that. And not everybody does. So that's why we really need to discuss that today. Um, that's what I'm asking. Commissioner Whitmore and then Commissioner Cruz and then Commissioner Bell. I, uh, I think in the one incident I can recall, it's because one person versus another person did something and we didn't eject the other person. But I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to well, bring I, that part you up. You are correct. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring up, uh, we all got an email, and um, so some people are watching the work session, and um, I don't recall using a per I didn't use a person by name. Do you all see the email? FYI, while you're talking about civility, while, while bringing up a taxpayer's name because she dared organize a protest oh, against Lord. a government official, which is very illegal, and then went on about me. Um, at the dais calling Catherine Morningstar, Debbie Glow, and Debbie Woosley, keyboard terrorists. First of all, and no proof, so whatever. But what I'm trying, I don't remember... I remember us talking about that there were people at an elected official's name, but I don't did I don't think anybody brought a name up. If I did, I missed it. 
They did. Oh, okay, I missed that part. It's off topic. <laughs> no, we're out of work. Session. That was a joke. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, but I um, I agree. I think um, I think what what happened in that one incident, and I don't think it's going to happen again. That we have to be consistent, and if we're going to eject somebody, and then somebody kind of does the same thing, and we don't, we got to be consistent. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm going to say. It's going to be job. consistent. So the board has to decide. Oh, turn your we, mic off, too. Not yours, but turn turn your mic off when people get out of hand. Say you're out of order and turn their mic off. I can do that. Yeah. But at the same time, the board has to support that action, which comes in these rules. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, all I'll say about that is, one, I, I've said it before, th there needs to be some leniency on off-topic unless it's blatant because people do tell stories and do things that ultimately get to a topic. And even if they weren't ever going to get to that topic, they can make the argument that they would. But part of the problem with consistency is there's no such thing as consistency amongst seven people's opinion on anything. And I'll, the, the bigger outbursts, the bigger problems we've had, the bigger fights we've had has come not so much from the chair, or at least not exclusively the chair. It's been a pile-on of non-chair people on the board taking the vigilante approach of, of shutting down a speaker. I think what we need to agree, no matter how much you think that speaker is out of turn or talking about someone's name or whoever, this is the chair's responsibility because you can't have consistency if you don't have one common opinion on things. When when Jerry when people were yelling about Jerry, it wasn't Vanessa who brought it up first. And Kevin, you've been very good at yelling at people up there and, and giving your opinion. Um, but again, because we haven't had rules about it, you, but you, you have pointed out we do have rules. But I'm not going to jump but, as but, quickly but as not, some but, might no, but want the, but to. But the rules specifically, the chair sell rules. So if we're going to follow the rules, follow the rules. You can't have consistency if 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 Commissioner Satcher thinks somebody's off topic, but. Uh, Commissioner of Serbia thinks that they're on topic. You're not going to have consistency. It just has to be the chair has to make this decision, win or lose, just accept it. And after all the public comments, if we want to take a step back during our commissioner comments and have a discussion on whether or not we feel her opinion was valid and reflective of all of us, we can have that. But we all just need to keep our mouths shut during public comment because it's when two or three of us all start yelling at, at a speaker that things start blowing up and someone gets arrested. That, that's, that's my only opinion, is just leave it to the chair for this. Commissioner Bellamy. I, I think I'm at, at a point where I'm looking for a little bit more direction here as, as far as when, so we can protect the chair, whoever the chair is. <laughs> Look at something a little bit more specific um, as if this did not. If this takes place, then this is going to take place. I, I think what we have here is, is a general covering, but this right here is not given to the public. This right here is, is, is not clear when they're doing the civility pledge or when they're up there. It's just not saying... They don't know how we feel about this. They feel like they can just say anything they want because we're elected officials. They can talk to us any kind of way. That you're right. Right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 they're, and, and, and they're saying that. But like Commissioner Satcher just said, hey, this is our house, our rules. If we, don't, if we want you to stay on topic, right, where we don't want no personal takes, yeah, he did. Am I, am I, did I misquote you, sir? That's wonderful. I didn't hear that. <laughs> but but if, if, if they're at the, at the three areas that we've been discussing, what is the if this then that? If you do this, then our expectations of the chair is to say you're, oh, you are out of order. Then once the chair have said that once, then what are the next steps? However, because it's public comment, the individual speaking may not know our expectations, may not know, okay, if you don't do, if you talk about this particular staff member, they're going to stop you from speaking. They may not know that. And what I'm saying is I think we need to get in front of it a little bit more. No, I don't think no but we don't expect them to. Right. We're saying it, but I, I think we need to inform them of our expectations a little bit more detailed. That's the only thing that I'm saying. Inform them of our expectations a little bit more detailed so we can protect the chair, whoever the well, chair is. Well, it protects the, the county. county government. Right. right. And, and that's why I was asking you about the civil pledge. 
you well, know, I, what had you done on that, and where was it, and oh, no, how I, I, far did you carry it? Well, because I, I, think I carried that's it important. here so we can have everybody on the same page. Yeah. That's, why we, that's why I'm so vocal right now about it, because I want everybody to say, or I wanted to see if everybody say, okay, the three areas are off-topic profanity, and, and personal attacks. Ooh, but the sheriff's calling me. Then, <laughs> tell him I say hi. Well, if this, if this, then that, and that may be an issue that he said they can only go so far. Really? <laughs> That's a good idea? Sorry. He knows that we're in this meeting. He knows that we're in this meeting. But I'm, I'm, asking, I'm, I'm asking legal to say, okay, what, what steps can we give the chair? What, what steps can well, we give I, the chair? Commissioner Bell Bellamy, I don't know that we can add anything to this rule in terms of her authority um, beyond what's there and remain legally defensible. This is the legal standard that you will see, you know, that it reflects what the case law says about what our ability is if somebody is out of order, if they are disrupting the meeting. In terms of what type of public you know, information you want to provide to people when they sign up for meetings, what you want them to sign or read or see, you know, that's that's the board's prerogative. But in terms of how this rule reads, you know, I'm I'm I would be hesitant to recommend putting more in there than is already there. Right. But believe it or not, my intent is not just to protect the chair. It's also to protect the citizen. Because the citizen has the right to speak but they should be informed of what our expectations are. You cannot attack. You cannot use profanity. You cannot go off topic. And I, I think what you've done, Mr. Clegg, is shifted it to the, 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 the communication from what's in 5.43 to how we communicate to the citizen prior to them being able to get up and speak. Correct. And, and, and I think that's even that we should get in front of. Mm -hmm. I think okay. so, too. And, and thank you, Commissioner Bellamy. Much. That's exactly what I was thinking, <laughs> me personally. Um, Commissioner Satcher and then Commissioner Van Ostenbridge and then Commissioner Servia. I see. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, referencing back to a situation that we all remember and that we know that we're uh, alluding to, I do want to point out one significant thing that was different between the two situations, and that is one that, that when the chair when when the chair said, and I don't remember exactly what the command was. You need to stay on topic. You need to not yell. You need to not be personal. It was one of these things here, and it was, and the answer was, I will not. You know, it was a, it was a, I'm not going to do what you're asking. You know, and 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 those were those are parameters. I understand what we spoke about, like this is free speech within the, uh, you know, you have the right to say whatever you want in your home or in your front yard or whatever. But if you're here, we have some reasonable, and those they've been upheld, uh, some reasonable parameters. So so I, I just wanted to point out that I, I see when I went back through that whole situation, because I walked through it, and I wanted to know, you know, hey, if I'm in the wrong or someone... What can we do better going forward? And that was one thing that I saw, you know, but this one thing was very different because the other person who got away with, uh, you know, also breaking the rules, but when they were told to change, they did make a change. Now, they weren't, you know, perfect about it. No. But they did, you know, okay, you're done, they were done, or whatever. I forget exactly what the chair was asking. Um, and so maybe that can just help us all to see that, uh, even though we are all growing and getting better, I don't know that there was a complete, uh, you know, abandoning of the rules that we already have in the past situations, but I do think it's important to make them more clear. Um, another thing that I'd like to bring up is that, you know, we do have uh, different commissioners that have different opinions. Um, I think we've had... I, th <laughs> I think that... Uh, maybe I won't... I think it's okay. You guys aren't. It's not going to hurt y'all's feelings. I mean, we've had Commissioner uh, Cruz, you know, and Commissioner Van Ostenbridge kind of on the opposite side of this issue. Um, they have both, I believe, while a person's speaking, one has interrupted the chair to say, keep speaking, and one has interrupted the chair to say, make them stop. So I don't see it. I'm not criticizing either one. I'm saying this is good that we're getting to the bottom of it. Um, what would you say, uh, just asking the attorney or the, uh, you know, what would you say as far as the chair has the right to do a point of order, right? 
while they're while during a public comment to to interrupt the person speaking and say we need to hear your name hey we need you to stay on topic etc right. right yeah and so maybe that would be something that uh, you know if we all support that and get a, they get you know direction on where where they need to stay the lanes they need to stay so within i mean some some policing of speakers to make sure they stay on topic is important because it's part of the basis under the First Amendment case law for your being able to maintain orderly meetings that are focused on county business. And so that you're not creating what's called an open public forum where people can just show up and talk about any subject they want. Once you do that, it's real hard to call that back. And it, it has um, implications and consequences. But I do agree with uh, Commissioner Cruz that you have to be careful about how you apply it right. and the best way to do that is give them a chance to comply in other words don't rule them out of order before they've started talking about the subject because they can most people can find a way to make that about a future agenda item and you know Let's I'd like you to it. think about doing this you know is normally what they do and you really need to give them the chance to do that before you say you don't get to talk. That's that's the best way to handle that. Okay. And um, I also I wanted to just get your uh, take 5.4.2.7, speaking on a subject about which the board has already taken a position or about which the board has voted not to receive further comment. I don't know that the receive further comment has happened since I have been here well, since November. It's a, I mean, uh, uh, Commissioner Satcher, it's a good point. I mean, that the or good question. The idea is if you've concluded discussion on something mm -hmm. and you're done with that for the day and you're moving on to the next thing on the agenda, then you can require speakers to move on with you. That's the idea behind that language. Does that make sense? I mean, it's a, it's a parliamentary proceeding. So at some point, the courts say you got to be able to get on with the business at hand. You you've made one decision. You've already talked about that item. You took a vote on it, and now you're calling them down for another item. They've got to address the next item. They can't keep going back to, this, to the subject that was decided upon earlier. That's the, that's the intent. And my, I guess my question, does that rule, let's do a hypothetical that is related to um, what we've seen. So let's take the, uh, the puppy sale ban. Okay, so let's pretend it had not been brought up and voted on already, uh, but everyone kind of knew it was out there and had been spoken of at length. So it'd been on a, you know, it'd been, say, tabled, something like that, or maybe a vote had been taken, but we still have people coming in, filling up the 30 minutes, talking about that topic. Well, I don't think Is that something, could, could we hold a vote to say we're done with public topic on that unless it comes up on an agenda in the future? I don't think you can apply this rule to future agenda items because they could say, I want you to come back and consider that again. Trust me, I don't So I, I really think this rule is just intended for, the day. For, for in the same meeting. It's just for the day, yeah. saying we talked about yeah, this today. This future agenda, it gives the speaker the ability to say, I'd like you to take this up next meeting, you know, whatever it is, even if it's something you talked about before. And I don't think you got to err in favor of people being able to talk in Absolutely. that situation. So I, I don't Absolutely. think you could use this to get around their right to do that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just going to intercede at this point. The sheriff did call. It wasn't about what we were just talking about. It was actually about what happened yesterday. Um, but I will tell you, and I haven't told this board this because it really didn't matter, I didn't think, but um, after uh, the experience that we had before, um, I met with the sheriff and, and a couple of other people and, and took Scott Hopes with me to make sure that what I did and how I handled it was proper um, and to see if there were any recommendations that, you know, I might receive or something. Since it was kind of new to me, I'd never really been involved with him, that person. And um, actually, surprisingly, the sheriff had already looked at it the county attorney, or not county attorney, the state attorney had looked at it. He was in the meeting. Um, and they said that we were very, uh, we handled it perfectly. So um, we didn't do anything wrong. No, hey, I'm not talking about yesterday. I'm talking about before. I'm not going to mention any names. I'm just saying I have been trying to make sure 
that what I do is is appropriate, is what I'm trying to say. And, um, you know, I, I was told that it was. And, and so, and I don't look and try to kick anybody out of a meeting. That is the last thing that we should want to do. We should let citizens speak, but at the same time, they need to be respectful, just like commissioners up on the dais need to speak with respect to others. So, you know, it's not my goal to have anybody have to leave our meeting, but at the same time, um, you know, we're, we're trying to do the right thing, and sometimes that's not easy to do. Commissioner Van Osterbridge, Commissioner Servia, and then Commissioner Bellamy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would disagree with Commissioner Satcher. I, I don't think that Commissioner Cruz and I are on opposite sides oh, of this. Lord, I think we're on the same side. I think we both I want think consistency. I think y'all are definitely on the same well, side. I do. I think we both want consistency. Um, yeah, we, he just has a little more relaxed approach, and I have more of a football coach run a tighter ship approach. I think that's the difference. Uh, I think also, I do not. Uh, I have not yelled at anyone that comes up when I take a point of order. I am addressing the chair. That's right. Uh, I have every right to do so, and the chair has every right to overrule me when I do. It's as simple as that. So I will continue to do that because if you're going to have the rules, then you should enforce the rules. If you, if you don't want to enforce it, then you should hold a vote and say people can talk about any topic that they want or they can attack people personally and then allow them to do that. But I don't think when we're discussing boat ramps and you say, and also I can't stand Vanessa Baugh or da 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 well, you know what? You're not going to circle that back around to boat ramps, okay? <laughs> Vanessa Baugh's used to that. But oh, that's you. a good example of personal attack. But if, if you're just, if you, sure, but I can take a point of order and bring it to her attention. She can overrule me. And I can take a point of order. That I don't, I don't think it's even up for debate. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, you have every right to do so, but I will tell you that my hope would be in, in working and, be, and going through this, you've been in meetings where this has come up, so my hope would be that instead of being quick to do it, you might look at me and give me that look that I know so well, and I will, I know what you're talking about because it might be that I don't want to necessarily pound, depend, depending on what's been said. Sure. You know, immediately. I'm going to wait and try and give that person an opportunity. And I might say something to them. I might not be so quick to want to kick somebody out, so to speak. But, you know, I'm going to give them the opportunity to get back on track and, 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 give us whatever it is their message that they want to give us in a proper way. Sure. And to be so, clear, I have never asked that anyone be removed. No, you've I have simply pointed out that someone is either off subject or they're attacking a staff member or they're, or they're attacking, uh, making a, a derogatory remark towards, you know, anyone in the room. Well, just know that I'm not saying that I won't. Sure. But, but I'm saying like said, that I might not react to it as quickly as you want. As sometimes I, I zone out and, and I miss it. Commissioner Whitmore has pointed out several times that I missed that someone was attacking her. Oh, trust me. I, know. Uh, yes. <laughs> I forgot to point it out. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Anyway, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we should, shouldn't we? Commissioner Servia? Yes, thank you. What do I always say? I don't know if you guys remember this, but democracy is messy. It is not an easy thing. And it's a good thing that it's messy. Um, I thought she was going to say politics. No, democracy is messy. It's the best system out there, though. Um, so I think the rules are really good. And um, to address Commissioner Bellamy's point, what if we read the rules before the start of public comment every or have time? Or the... Yes. Well, if you or have, have it, it posted, like you and I talked both. About. I think both is good. I do think both is good to get people in the habit of understanding them. Um, and then um, I agree with Cruz that the chair has the authority. I mean, that's why chairs are different in how they manage the meeting. But the the ultimate authority is with the chair to determine what is appropriate, what isn't appropriate, when the mic is going to be shut off, etc. And the checks and balances are that you can say point of order, or any of us can. And if there's enough of us, then the chair is going to respond to that. So I think all that works great. Um, I, I agree with you, Cruz, though, and he's shaking his head. I agree with you that I am the type of person that will I would allow people to talk um, about just about almost anything. And if they say, I don't like Misty Servia because, and we're talking about boat ramps, they may get there eventually. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to cut them off eventually if they just say something like that. I, I'm going to wait. 
if I was in that position. But yeah, I, I think the system is going to work. It's just not clean and simple. They're saying all of us should free for all on our own opinion. And as long as we're saying point of order, any of us can yell at anybody about anything. I, again, I, point that, I, I make a point of order. That's the checks and balances. Being said. A, a point that's of order the is checks and balances. But here's the problem. If someone's doing something, I pressed it. If someone's doing something that any of us are going to yell out point of order, then you're already in an agitated state with that speaker. So if any of us yell out point of order, you're only making it worse. You're never going to make it better. Nobody standing up there is going to be so upset that somebody here wants to yell a point of order. And when someone randomly from the dais yells out point of order, Madam Chair, that that person's just going to calm down. That's I agree the opposite. with you. And it's just going to make it worse. And then someone else is going to yell point of order because now they're going to be like, now he's swearing because he's swearing at the person who said point of order. And then the, the deputies come and drag him out. Okay, that, wait, that's just what wait. happens. If, if one person makes the decision... No. Again, you don't have to like it, but it's for three minutes. I guarantee all of you have heard much worse than anything anybody up there is saying if they're talking about boat ramps and they're supposed to be talking about affordable housing. Let the chair make the decision. And at the end of the day, during commissioner comments, you could say, Madam Chair, during public comment, I disagreed with how lean you, you were with people. And then that dialogue can happen. Is, is it killing go. you? Sorry, it's only it going to get decision. worse. I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comment on this because I don't want this to be a free-for-all, and, and I feel like that's where we're going. And we're going to take a five-minute recess here in just a minute. Be um, it's, we're talking about three minutes. We're not talking about a long period of time. So personally, I think we need to try and make us look up on the dais, professional, and, and stay on track. I don't think we need to start all yelling at the chair because maybe I don't see it the way you do or I don't respond as quickly as you might like because I might have a different opinion on how to move forward and handle this. And I don't want to make a big scene. I'd rather it be calm, okay? So let me do it. And then all y'all have to do, any of you, and trust me, you all have. <clears throat> There's not a one of you that hasn't looked at me and given me that look, including you. So I know the look. That's all you got to do. I'll get it. Seriously. I mean, we're all adults here. Come on. Uh, let's not, uh, you know, and if you want to, you know, question what I did later, I'm good. I'm good. But let's not make it a free-for-all. We've done that enough. That's all I'm going to say. And, and guys, Madam I Chair, hope y'all don't mind. Yes, Before sir? you take a recess, I just would like oh, to, just a point of order is... <laughs> uh, is something that one commissioner can use to interrupt another on a procedural issue. Thank you. It's not for interrupting the public. No. That is the chair's that chair's thing to handle under the, the way the rules written right now. The point of so order is not the point proper. of order is when commissioners are in debate with one another and one has been recognized and the other feels there's something procedurally improper with something that they're doing. So it cannot be used uh, as a procedure, bring attention to a procedure that someone feels is not being followed because the person in the public is off topic. They're already on the list. So, so someone it's should really not. really not see. supposed to be used that way. Okay. That's not really okay. Do we all Procedurally, hear Procedurally, I should use the look. Yeah. Okay. So use the I look. I would prefer it because <laughs> I know that look. is the proper procedure. <laughs> all right, Reggie, you go ahead, and then we are going to take a five-minute break. Well, here, here's, here's my issue. I mean, my point. I, I think we're, we're kind of missing it because if we recite the rules, we're putting ourselves in a situation where we're being proactive instead of reactive. I totally agree. And that's the only thing that I'm saying to, for us to protect our citizens and for us to protect all of us, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Then we don't even have to get to the point of order. You if just we, said at 3 o'clock. I've been. <laughs> I'm done, Madam Chair. <laughs> For the record, the chair totally agrees with Commissioner Bellamy on this particular item. <laughs> Dr. Hopes. Because. I just said we were taking a break, Dr. Hopes. Because the current bylaws and rules do incorporate Robert's Rules of Order, a point of order uh -oh. is when a member thinks that the rules of the assembly are being violated he, or I'll put in there she, can make a point of order 
or raise, raise a question of order, thereby by calling upon the chair for a ruling and an enforcement of the regular rules, all of the rules of the body in conducting the meeting. Just a point of clarification. Well, respectfully, I don't think that's wor how our rules work. Because Thank you, and I'm going with the county yeah. attorney. Our rules don't. Oh, no, but do our rules, <laughs> but do the rules contradict There's this? There's nobody in this room that didn't think that. If they don't contradict <laughs> it, then it's incorporated. Wait, but listen. The rules say that Robert's rules apply only where our rules are silent. So do we, right. where do we say one order is limited? We say it in our, as something that can be raised during debate between commissioners when one commissioner interrupts another. Dr. Hopes, I'm it. sorry, but when we're talking about change the law it, and that's procedures, what it says right now. I'm going to go with the county attorney. We're taking a five-minute recess.
Right. Um, Mr. County Attorney, would you like to proceed? I would like to move on to public hearings if we can. We've had a pretty intense discussion about, about conduct and orderly meetings. Um, so this is Rule 5.5, which begins on page 10, and um, it carries through for several pages. There's quite a bit that you see redlined here that's carryover from, you know, many years. And I think, you know, I'll speak for Sarah and myself. We both have for some time wanted to have the opportunity to go through this and make some pretty significant changes. The purpose of those changes is to make this more consistent with the common law of land use in terms of what is actually required under the case law. And we have experience with that in the county. We've had to litigate these issues in terms of what is actually required in the participation of the public, you know, individuals who have an interest in the matter at hand. And so you see, for example, just at the beginning of the rule, we've deleted quite a lot of language about what is quasi-judicial and what is a public hearing because those things are really driven by case law. And so you get yourself in trouble if you have too much detail in there that may conflict with a decision of the courts. And it's a fluid body of law, so those things can change from time to time. Um, then I guess moving on to, if it's all right, I'd like to move on to the conduct of public hearings unless anybody has questions about the explanation of terms, which is 5.5.1. Um, in the conduct of public hearings, we saw some general language about who presents and when they, when they present, and we felt like we needed to clarify that um, some things, the applicant is initiating the item, and so they're the ones that really needs to go first, make the initial presentation, um, because they're the ones who have the burden of proof. So we needed to clarify that for legal reasons. If there are no questions about that, I'll move on to 5.5.3, which is quasi-judicial public hearings. All right. Um, and here again, we did some cleanup to bring this closer in line with the case law. So the terminology changes you see in there, for example, referring to our applicable standards, referring to testimony and analysis um, are designed to go back to what we think is, you know, what the courts expect us to be doing. The big change is on my page 13. There is a process, and we've had to deal with it in a few hearings, where people can come up and ask for the opportunity to, to um, provide additional testimony at the conclusion of the hearing regarding alleged factual errors. And I think some of you have had the pleasure of being going through this in some of the okay. hearings. This is not required by case law. There may have been a time when there was a feeling among some lawyers that there was because you, you see it in some uh, trials, but it's, it's not something that we need to do in land use disputes. And Sarah, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or we... Or I support the leading it. Yeah, so we decided, you know, that's a very tedious process. And we've seen some, you know, when somebody wants to kind of shut down the process, take advantage of it to really drag out the decision. And the way the courts look at it, it's not really adding anything to the procedural due process to which people are entitled in the hearing. I can see. Commissioner Whitmore, did you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about that because it was new maybe like last year or the year before where. And we learned about this through Lobeck and maybe another other couple attorneys, and really it kind of really messed up as far as the smoothness of the meetings. But I thought it was by law. Now our attorney, and I'm just asking, our attorneys are recommending that we don't have that. So are we going to cause a problem where they're going to go after us? So we had to do this in Altman and Wingate I can't hear as you. well. We had to do this in two protracted phosphate decisions as well many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. So this has been in the rules for quite a while. It's just not always invoked. Oh, but got it. So you've just, you, you may have forgotten about it because it's been a long time since someone invoked it. We are comfortable that removing it is legally defensible and advisable because it is not required 
under the Snyder case and its progeny to make sure that we meet quasi-judicial standards for our land use decision making. So when Lobeck comes up and starts screaming at us and screaming at the chair, oh, I can we are that. under legal standing because we're changing what we've been doing for That's previous cases. That's a legislative cases. decision. You have the right to do that. And once okay. the new rules are effective, he won't be able to demand the right. That's the problem when you put more in there than the case law says they're entitled to. You create an argument for procedural due process based on your rules. And so what we're saying is, let's take it out. It's not something we need to do. We give people plenty of process, plenty of opportunity to raise their issues, cross-examine witnesses. We've been across the street on that, and we withstood scrutiny many times. And so we're comfortable this is something that And isn't Lobeck, he's the only one, I think, that's done that, that I recall. Recently, but it's come up in other hearings. I don't think we should single him out individually. Other uh, lawyers have invoked it over the years. It's just that not everybody makes a study of the, the rules and says, aha, look, here's something I can invoke at the end of this hearing in order to make this go on longer. Yeah. He does it. Uh, and if I could, is it okay to move on? Yeah. All right, yes. so, and then we also um, pared back significantly the language um, that deals with the questioning of witnesses. Um, and once again, we think this is more consistent with the case law. There's a little more detail in there than we think we need to have um, in order to meet the standards. And those, those things can come back to bite you. So now we get to what I think everybody does have an interest, a greater interest in is time periods for public hearing matters. And here in 5.5.4.2, you see the reference to people being able to speak for 10 minutes if they represent a group. I, I need to point out that it dovetails into another rule down in other procedural guidelines, which is on my next page, 14, which is 5.5.5.3, authorization of group representatives. So you have to read those two together to understand what people need to do in order to be able to get their right to speak for 10 minutes. Um, and that's, that's how that's pleased. And typically, they submit their written authorization. Um, and it, goes to, it says it goes to the chair, but for many years, board records, the clerk handled these. But it, it is something that the chair receives at the outset of the hearing. This is um, not our favorite in the county attorney's office. I'll be right up front with you all about it. It's not required under the case law. And the one thing that's very difficult, almost impossible to police, is you know they could be representing five or more people who could be sitting in the room and signing up to speak themselves. And it's really impossible to sit there and look at their, you know, maybe it's an HOA. Maybe it's, it. it's with tough. hundreds of people in it. <laughs> it's really impossible to be able to see whether they're double dipping. Mm -hmm. In other words, that somebody's representing the group, but then the members of the group are, are also speaking. They get up and, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I don't know how you police that. So what you wind up doing with a rule like this is you're going to have to accept that there are going to be opportunities for people to do that. And it's going to be very difficult to prevent those. Um, this can really drag out the hearings, but it is something that, um, you know, many people who participate in our, our, um, our, our proceedings place a high value on. I have to be upfront about that. I think it would, it would not be well received by some people if you all deleted it. But that is, that is how it works. Commissioner uh, Whitmore, did you have a question? Yeah, line six. Uh, organization must present written evidence. Um, you need to put a space between that. Well, some of that may be a function of the redlining because I've seen oh, some okay. of that compression. And when I go into the Word file, it's actually there. But we'll, we'll check it. Are there any comments or questions about that? Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I, I guess, and, I, and I was looking, you were saying 5.5.5 and then it's .14. I thought you said three. Well, we're, I couldn't. I wanted to find the area that you were speaking so on. So you start with five point five point four point two, which is on the bottom of page thirteen, and I'll zoom in on it here. Persons who have been authorized to represent an organization with five or more members or a group of five or more persons shall be entitled to speak ten minutes without interruption. 
So I, I guess where I was going is um, the defining um, group. Okay, and there's, I just wanted to make sure and I touched. that's where I was trying to go. There's right another there. rule that dovetails into it that's pretty wordy, but it says before a person representing an organization or group speaks, that person shall state whom or he or she represents and establish how he or she received authorization, uh, which shall include written authorization unless the chair waives the requirement. So, and there's obviously more detail there, but that's just to give the board a general idea of, you know, how this is spelled out in the rules, how this is supposed to operate. It's been in there for many, yep. many years. It predates both Ms. Schenk and myself um, joining the county Point attorney's five. office. Right, five so, so I, I guess my concern is, you know, A, defining a group, and I guess that's what is done, and then the time matter in which a group can be defined, right? Because I can get Commissioner Barr, Cruz, and, and Von Osterbridge, and then we can say we are a group right now and come up on a, on, on a topic and then say, I get 10 minutes. I think if we can look at the language within our rules and say that they have to give us their group or give us, you know, their background or something so we can legitify that the fact that they're, if that's a word, so we can make that as legitimate that they're actually a, a group, how can we look at that differently within this language? Because if we just keep it general as a group, they'll continue to, to be in the crowd and say, I got five signatures and I'm representing um, Trojan Electric. I'm, re I'm, I'm representing them and we're going to speak on this topic. But I think if <laughs> Trojan Electric, but I think if, if, Trojan, if, if Trojan Electric, um, yeah, right, I think the reality of it is how far in advance can they request to speak those 10 minutes? I think we can look at that um, be, because if they, they're in the audience and, and establishing a group, that's something totally different. But does the law say that this group has to be established within a certain amount of time? Can we say you need to submit this information within seven days or 14 days or 24 hours? That's what, that's what the law says and that's what's written in our procedures. I'm recommending it. Can't wait to hear from Sarah Shank on this one. Right, I'm asking. I don't know. Well, go ahead, Sarah. Say on this point that in my past life, I represent the city of Sarasota. We pre qualify the groups, but you have to have a staff person signed to it. They submit the request ahead of time. You got to verify it's an HOA. There's a lot of work involved. And I wouldn't even recommend going down that route. Okay. It's like hurdles for the citizens to overcome. But keep in mind, we don't really have a form for them to fill out when they say we represent a group. They just submit a letter. The, one, the way to guide them would be to have a form that calls out. More, more specifics, but if we're not asking them to tell us where they live, I mean, you can say you represent an association or HOA and you don't know the five people that live there. The, the, really, the person in interest is the applicant opposing, I mean, assuming the citizen and the applicant are against each other. The applicant can cross-examine the citizens and inquire as their authority. It's really a burden on the applicant to do that, not the county. So I always just leave it. And the applicants normally don't like to pick on citizens because it's going to be Exactly. Looks like overreaching. <clears throat> but that's the, if there was an issue, that's what, the way it would be handled in a quasi-judicial hearing. The applicant would question the citizens and how they got their authority. And it's, it's difficult, too, because applicants use it as well. Um, you know, that we've had them show up and then have a long list of their employees sign up to speak, and they're getting additional time and representing basically the same people that are talking when they sign up individually. But if you're going to prevent them from doing that, you're going to have to do that with the public as well in order to be equal and even-handed about it. And that's why it, it gives us some legal headaches in the county attorney's office. Um, but it is something that has been in our rules for many years. And I, I have to be honest, there is a public expectation that we're going to have opportunities for people to get extra time um, if they're representing a group of people. Commissioner Van Austin Bridge, did you have anything? No. Okay, um, Bill. Real quick on that, is that also the procedures in like Sarasota County and our surrounding counties, Hillsborough, Pinellas, et cetera? Do you I don't know? know about Sarasota. When I looked at Hillsboro when we started working on this, I did not see that. What I saw there was the chair can grant additional time for good cause for well, people, and it's more. It isn't as specific and it's not a certain amount of time you know it's more of a discretionary 
ability to give more time. Okay. Well, that's, that's my recollection. I can go back and check again. Yeah. But well, 5. as 5, I said, 4. we're 5. we're a little more. I don't want to use the word generous because that's probably not the right word. We're a little more. We have a little more um, yeah. detail and a little more breadth to our requirements to allow for public speaking than some other other places do, and I think this is reflective of that. Okay. I don't. Any other commissioners questions? No. Go ahead. All right. Um, we really don't have much else left after <clears throat> these rules. I mean, we went into the. Bill, the, yes, on page 15, the request for a full board is different. Do you want to hit that? And there's something okay. ahead of that, too, before, if we're going in order. The, the, you crossed out the additional time. Is that just what, what's that about? Um, can you give me the exact? Um, on page 15, it does, it's not numbered. At the top. It's, it's right. At, it's not 5.5.5.4. It's, it's at the top of page 15. 15. So ahead. right here? Right there. Okay. That happens all the time. Oh, yeah. No, but I think we put this in a different spot. Okay, because yes. I don't see the applicant. Yeah, we yeah, Bill, it's that. on page 14. Right. 5.5.4.5. .5, the chair may grant time extensions for good cause. Right. That's mm -hmm. the it's not as detailed as asking a half hour, an hour, you know. Yeah, obviously that's something that does happen all the time, but we felt like that, that was, that provision was laden with a lot of detail, and oftentimes that's not how it's done in practice. It's do you need another, how much more time do you need to wrap up? You know, and so we just tried to be a little more flexible. Commissioner Cruz? Yeah, because, I mean, we do get this all the time, especially from the applicants, but there's nothing defined. Like, you know, you should be able to to fit whatever you need to fit within some window of time. If you need a little more time, but like for instance, we have a request right now for one hour tomorrow. And that's that's a, a long period of time. It, it doesn't. It, I, so I'm just curious if we have any, you know, if, if there's any structure in place to say, hey, here's the amount of time you're supposed to get, and here's the additional amount of block of time you can request, and that's it. The original time or a request for additional time. Because hypothetically, could someone show up and go, nah, I need four hours. I want to I show you guys a movie. It's not going to happen. Right. We no. would say no. Um, <laughs> but we, we did have somebody actually going. try to show us a movie once, as I recall. Well, I that actually happened. Well. Yeah. Um, you know, Commissioner Cruz, it's, this is, again, it's up to the board if you want to put some additional detail in there. You know, we like more flexible language because in practice we see how these things vary from case to case. Um, but but my, my issue is, like, now we got this request for an hour. Well, hypothetically, almost any future, future applicant can come in and request an hour even if they don't need it, just so they don't feel rushed because what are we going to say? No, they're going to say, you gave it to that guy. What's your justification for not giving it to me? Why are you withholding my ability to give a full presentation when you gave somebody else the right for, for an hour-long presentation? First of all, I talk for 40 minutes, but maybe they just figure out if something else pops into my head, I might as well get this extra time now. It, isn't that making it harder for us to decline a request? I, well, go ahead, Sarah. Well, I was just saying, the board can ask questions. Why do you need the hour in that I hate to talk about tomorrow, but then one instance that is legislative, mm -hmm. so you have more flexibility. But in quasi initial, we did have one public hearing on, on a large project on a special meeting date, and the applicant had the 14 witnesses, expert witnesses, and it was highly contested. And you use your common sense how much time they would need versus the typical hearing. I think the, the chair, in the first instance, the board with the chair has discretion. On that. So... If the board wants to put some outside limitation on this, you could. Uh, I agree with what Ms. Shank just said, but I don't think the language that we removed really did that. It was a very detailed and kind of you know, had some references to proponents and opponents, and <clears throat> if it's more than this amount, then it has to be done in writing, but it doesn't really put a limitation on it. Uh, I would you know, be curious, Commissioner Cruz, what is it that you're looking for? Do you think? You know, I'm not. I'm not looking for anything. This is our first time really diligently going through this line by line, and so part of it is just my own understanding. I mean, technically, by taking all that language out and look, less language is always good. But 
we've haven't we taken out the requirement for additional for written additional time ahead of time so that we have some awareness of that they don't be always ask in writing i have to be honest with you about that sometimes it happens in a lot of times it happens in the hearing a lot of times what is and, that? and we do recommend that you go ahead and give it to them and the reason is mm -hmm. because if you're going to deny it the easiest way to get that overturned by a judge Bam. is a procedural due process yep. and so we let them talk you know because we'd rather not have to defend it on those grounds but you could put some kind of governing governing you know mechanism on that if it's more than five minutes like it used to say if it was more than half an hour you had to submit in writing you could put that requirement back in and i don't think that would cause us a lot of heartburn because we wouldn't be putting back in all of the other surplusage that we removed if I, that's something the board wants to do. I, I would like to add this. I can tell you from my experience so far this year, um, anytime anything like that comes up, Sarah Shank is always right there. And I've always turned to her to kind of address it so that we are consistent, we're following everything correctly, we're not doing something more for one than we do for the other, and it just keeps everything really moving and, and keeps us legally on the right path. Well, I would say one other problem we have is that the applicants lawyer up and they read these procedures and they submit their request in mm -hmm. writing. That's right. But then a, the people that show up at the hearing who have not are not familiar with it and they ask for additional time as well. And so you know, the practical issues are what gives us pause from a legal standpoint because of the, the potential for procedural due process challenges. But if it's something you want us to look at and look at some other jurisdictions in greater detail, we can certainly do that. Anybody else, commissioners? Commissioner Cruz, anything else, sir? All right. Anything else? Um, I will just kind of scroll through. The, I think most of the rest of this is... Oh, Bill, can we also say request a full board? Can we just mention... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You did want us to address that. So... Um, Help me out, Sarah. Where are we? That's page oh, here 15. it is. Yep, at the bottom of page Continue 15. Continue public hearings 5555. Five, five. As you know, it's been past practice, and that precedes my coming here, that the applicant asks for continuance that they don't see a full board when they come in the door. Mm -hmm. Now, that looks like for, like shopping the board, who's here, who's not here. And citizens that come in, they, they see that, it, it doesn't, and the judge may not like that. So the applicant can ask for continuance. They just have to state what their reason is. But we don't want to have to have it in writing because it looks like they have an entitlement to have certain commissioners here and, and not here. But as the same token, if Commissioner Survey knows she's going to be out of town at a certain meeting, she can email the chair and say, I, I wish you wouldn't hear this project when I'm gone because it's my district. And the board on its own can continue it if you don't have a full board for that reason or something like that. But it's better to come from the board that you before a full board for an important decision and continue, rather than just the applicant shopping the board that last minute. Commissioner Whitmar? And I know um, when there's times in the past, I think I had back surgery or something, but if I knew I'm having something or, or I mean, I can't be there, um, I've always put it in writing to the attorney and the county administrator and, our, and then passed it on. And I know some of us know that we have things planned and unfortunately, sometimes land use days last longer than we, we do. And, you know, I, I also have issues, too. But we kind of need to, um, in all fairness, like you said, so we don't get sued. If we know ahead of time we're not going to be there, we, we probably need to put something in writing so that uh, at least Sarah knows because then they notify the applicant. And I know a few times when it, um, commissioners couldn't make it, the applicant would cancel before it even came, uh, you know, to continue. And that's their right. Um, Madam so. Chair, Commissioner Whitmore, it's very, very difficult to sue a local government successfully for continuing something. Quite mm -hmm. honestly, we, we have a lot of discretion in doing that. Um, you know, and just to kind of dovetail into Sarah's remarks, the other issue is that the, um, the public doesn't get that right. You know, if their district commissioner is not there, they don't get to demand a continuance. It's, it's unique to the applicant. So I think it, it does, you know, it, it would be better if we could remove it. You can still give them a continuance if they ask for one. And we typically recommend that you do because if they're not ready to go to hearing, 
it puts us in a difficult position later if we deny their their project and they argue to the judge that they should have been given that opportunity to be better prepared. Um, is it all right to move on? I do have one more um, change that is of substantive significance. I think it is. So we go down to 5.5.6, which is you know, the lower half of um, page 16. And this is, and if, if the board has, um, you know, things you want to talk about here, this is how we deal with voting, um, motions, modifications of motions. But the one that we did change, um, we did take out some longstanding language regarding reconsideration. And um, the reason for this is that right now, the way the rules work, mm. there's this concept of reconsidering things during the meeting or at the next regular meeting. And maybe it'll make uh, Dr. Hopes happy that I reference Robert's rules here because, you know, in parliamentary proceedings, reconsideration, if you look at Robert's rules um, and other parliamentary, other, other um, procedural rules of other local governments, reconsideration is not supposed to be at, at another meeting. It's during the meeting. During. It's not, you know, we're going to go back and undo decisions that we made before. There are legally defensible ways to do that. You can repeal an ordinance that you already adopted. You can, you know, if you have the ability within the four corners of an agreement, you can terminate that agreement if there are, is a basis for doing that. But the idea that you can make a decision one week and then the, at the next meeting just undo it is actually legally questionable. And we've had to litigate this. And it was a real headache. It was a really difficult thing to litigate years ago. And it was, a, it was you know, to trying to resolve a $618 million Burt Harris claim. And, and somebody charged us with not following our rules of reconsideration when we settled the claim. So you know, our view is this is out of sync with what you see in other governments. And so for that reason, we're recommending the changes that you see here. Um, so I would just, you know. <laughs> Ask you all to consider them. Yeah, Carol and I are both like, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, I know because <laughs> okay. it's it's something that people often try to use. They see it in our rules and say, oh, well, you made that decision last week. Um, I'll get a commissioner who voted for it routine. to undo the, the whole decision. Yeah, well, but, but okay, but, right. On the prevailing side. Yeah, but you can't do that in other well, let me ask a question because this is the first I've heard about it, and we win some, some really big lawsuits. <laughs> that $600 yeah. million was from a big, large company. Right. And you were the attorney yeah. um, on that case. And then did somebody, and I think Joe was chair. Or no, because you were. Oh. No. Okay. So what did you reconsider? What are we talking about? I, we're talking about, I'm talking about So Mosaic. what Mosaic. happened in the lawsuit? Why don't oh. I just explain Mosaic it? Mosaic won. I don't so, think it was So, you know, me. we were sued. or we, They didn't actually file it. They filed a Burt Harris right. claim and put us on notice. And you go through the Burt Harris process. And one of the things you can do is go back and approve what you originally denied with changes that are worked out with the claimant. And that's what we did. And then third parties challenged us, sued us for that, saying, because you did that, you violated your reconsideration rule because you didn't do it at the next meeting and it wasn't moved by somebody who was on the prevailing side. Now, we were able to, to uh, defeat that claim, but the judge spent a lot of time on it. It was a lot of work, and there was a point where we were really worried that we might undo the whole thing because of this item in our procedural rules, which we felt really had no um, applicability. What so are we supposed to be doing? It's the kind of thing that can come back to bite you, is what I'm saying. When you make decisions later, let's suppose you, you approve a contract, and then a few weeks later, you decide, you know what? We found out something that we don't like this deal, and we're going to terminate it. And they say, you can't, because you could only do that at the next meeting right, with somebody right. on their prevailing side. They can use this stuff as a weapon against yeah. you is what I'm saying. I thought it was the law. So, I thought this? so too. Yeah. It's just no, a board I don't rule. know. Did we make it? <laughs> it's just a county procedural rule been that's like been that there forever. for years. Always. It was here when I got here. It had been there a long time. It okay. goes back a long way. But our recommendation is that it be be removed from Good. the procedural I rules. It was like, okay. okay. And, and with what you and Carol were just discussing, you had mentioned that we could come back and uh, void the ordinance. Can, I mean, but do you have to do that at the next meeting, or can you do that six months later? 
you can I'm always six months later. repeal an ordinance that right. the board has adopted. You have to properly oh. notice it, and if it's quasi-judicial, oh. if it's quasi-judicial and it deals with somebody's property, then you have to do it as a county-initiated rezone, and obviously there's really significant legal implications for doing that. But there oh, are ways that, you know, elected boards can only bind future boards in very specific ways. Bonded debt, for example, is binding on future boards. A contract that is a legally enforceable contract that was duly approved by the board is binding on a future board. Even that is pretty tight. If, it, if, it's, a, if it's a future debt, it has to go to the voters unless there's some magic words in it. So, I mean, it, there are ways for boards to change prior decisions this isn't really recognized as one of them, quite honestly. And, and so we've always had a lot of heartburn about it. And we'd like to, I, I view this as catching up with what other counties have been doing for quite a while to remove this from our procedures. Why didn't we change it years ago? Well, this I is my first time law. to have a shot at it. So yeah, yeah okay. so this is my first opportunity to say why I think it, it needs to be changed. That's big. Yes, ma'am. And that's it. Unless the board has other questions or comments. Um, the, we did change the no. language. Bill, I got a question. So now that we've gone over this, well, kind of, are we going to see this again? You're going to make some changes and bring it back to Absolutely. Us again to look at? I think we should bring it back. I think we ought to workshop it one more time yeah, before we bring it yeah. forward for it's adoption to give you all a chance to, you know, to see what we've done and, and, you know, if you have additional things you want to talk about to have the chance to do that. I think the only comment that I'd probably like to say is that, you know, it kind of gives you a better picture of, of how things are done. And, and it's a lot more complicated as chair than what some people might think. And there's a lot that goes with it, a lot that goes with it. So, mm -hmm. And we don't generally think about it, you know. No, oh, I'm the chairman of the board. Yay. No, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yes, sir. We did also change no the, the reference to be more conforming with regards to uh, parliamentary authority with Robert's Rules of Order. So if you look at page 20, that was also cleaned up. Mm-hmm. Parliamentary authority. Yeah. That's it, Madam Chair. I like it. Commissioners? Well, Madam Chairman, I just want to say great job. I, this was a really good discussion, and I really appreciate it. And they're all really good changes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. I would echo that and also tell you that uh, this afternoon, the Bra City of Bradenton Planning Commission approved the Chick-fil-A for my district. <laughs> <laughs> we are one step closer, baby. <laughs> The old Bank of America across from Jesse P. Miller at 43rd, and oh, it's a huge, great. huge, great. huge lot, and I'm sure Mayor Brown, owning the funeral home next door, is thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin, there's something else going on Manatee Avenue. Uh, my family told me, and it's a, a restaurant. A chain. Do you know anything about it? I, I don't know. What 59th. Yeah. I know that Chad and I will be coming to you with requests to improve the intersection at 43rd and Manatee Avenue. Because you got enough oh, money. St. Stevens go. is on one side, Miller's on the other. Manatee High School kids, you know, BCS no. kids. It's going it to be. Was, it's going to be a hot mess. Yeah. What's on 59th and Manatee? It's 59th and Manatee. That's up to her. That's her decision. We haven't adjourned yet. No. no. Well, no other comments. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge was making a comment. Any other comments from you guys? No? no? Meeting's adjourned. All right. Thank you. Could you imagine?